Hello everyone and welcome to this very special video. Today I'm going to be announcing the winners of our Weapons of Legend contest. This is our first 3D contest here on the channel and it was an amazing, amazing experience. Let me show you some of the entries. For the past month, you guys have been working on amazing things and yesterday we went over the feedback. We went over every single one of the 37 entries that we had so far and we talked about the story, we talked about the design, we talked about the uh, inspiration and of course the technical aspects such as the modeling the textures the sculpting it was an amazing time this is going to be available after this announcement i just want to have the announcement at the very beginning so that you guys can check out who the winner is and uh, we can continue on to the next thing so just to remind you guys uh, we evaluated all of the elements in three categories story design and execution so the story has to do with how you like conveyed or created a very cool story around the objects that you were uh, modeling and sculpting the design is the design itself so even if you're not a super proficient 3d artist the the elements that you incorporated into the design how you presented those designs and those kind of things those are going to be included in this category the last category of course is the execution how well was your modeling how was your sculpting your uvs your render a lot of renders were like not so great we're going to talk about that in the channel in the next couple of days because you guys definitely definitely need some help there so i'm going to be making first before announcing the top three contenders i'm going to give a big shout out to three very cool i would say honorable mentions of this challenge you my friends did not made it to top three but i consider your stuff to be really 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 good so here we go the first one the first honorable mention goes to the stained glass sword by Corey smithereens this was an amazing concept i love the idea of having a stained glass sword i actually think if you work on this content a little bit more and you work on the shaders especially to really make it look like glass this could be an amazing very original sword so congratulations Corey, great, great result there for you. Another shout out to the Waymaker by I don't have your name right here, my friend, but you were very active on the chat. So the Waymaker, I really like the design principle, how you thought about everything, and even the story was really cool. The modeling set of things, it does look a little bit low poly. There are a couple of things that we can improve, but the idea was really, really nice. Finally, the last um, again shout out to as an honorable mention to Phantom. Phantom, you did an amazing job. Yours actually was really really close to getting into top three i think you miss the the like the category by like half a point or one point based on the little like excel sheet that i was writing but congratulations this is an amazing weapon just push it a little bit further and you're gonna have an amazing amazing results one more honorable mention that I want to say is to Juvrash Singh. My friend, you not only created a very, very cool piece, but you actually managed to embody the essence of this competition and of being a great artist because you asked for a lot of feedback and help throughout the process. You were sharing your stuff, you were asking for opinions, you were asking for feedback, and you managed to bring something that was looking really cool at the beginning to something that looks really, really cool now here at the end. So congratulations, my friend, for this amazing creation. You should be very very proud of this result now if you guys want to see all of the feedback all of the stories and all of the information that we talked about for all of the different weapons make sure to check the remaining of this video as soon as we finish the um what's the word this presentation now let's go to the top three in the top three we have first of all the reapers embrace the immortal bane sickle this i think was an amazing amazing execution this is a really clean it literally looks like it was taken out from elden ring even the presentation with like the little grain and the light i just really like this one by the way i was not the only one who took a look at these things i had some external friends of mine experts in the industry who helped me decide and yours was one of the ones that got into the top three so congratulations my friend you are in the top three we're gonna see who the winner is in just a bit our second contender in the top three is none other than Sonait the Hurdy Gurdy. This was not only a very original design, like this is a very, very cool idea for a weapon. I think this is one of the only musical weapons that we got this time around, but it's also very well executed. There's a very nice variation on the textures. The presentation of the render is very nice. There's a couple of things, and that's actually um, the, the thing that brought you a little bit down on the, on the markings, which is the render like this empty space over here but other than that this is a great great concept the story was also amazing so congratulations my friend on making top three 
And finally, the last top 3 selection is none other than the Inquisitor's Revenge. This was an amazing piece as well, very good execution, but I think what makes this piece really, really impressive was the story. The story and the design of this piece are really ingrained into the final execution and you can see just a very very cool a very cool artifact again I can see this in the game such as like Elden Ring or maybe something like Bloodborne like very gothic very very cool looking presentation wise again there's a couple of things that could be improved but other than that amazing and congratulations for getting into top three. These are the top three winners. All of you, my friends, are the winners of a golden coupon, which is gonna get you a free course of my current courses or any of our future courses. I'm gonna be giving you guys a special code that you're gonna be able to exchange. And once you exchange that code, you can pick any of my courses for free and you're gonna be able to be uh, the owner, the proud owner of that one. You also get a one hour session with me if you wanna talk about portfolio, career choices, or any 3D aspect that you need to cover. Just make sure to schedule it with me through the Discord channel and I'm going to be happy to talk to you directly and just have a good time and learn more about you and the 3D world. Now, the moment has come. From these three, like, runner-ups, from these three amazing honorable mentions, we are going to pick the winner. And the winner, in this case, in this first, our first contest, our first event, the Weapons of Legend, he who wins not only a $100 gift card, but also the title of Weapon Master is none other than Inquisitor's Revenge. Congratulations, my friend. We showed these three contenders to the top artists that I was talking about, some of my friends here in Mexico and in the United States, and the consensus was that yours is by far the most original right now. Not only were you able to create an amazing story and link a lot of the elements from your story into the design of your weapon, but you were also able to present it in a very professional way. So that's it. Congratulations, my friend. You won the Weapons of Legend 3D Art Contest. I'm going to be contacting you in the next couple of days to give you your prize, of course. And uh, yeah, feel free to just like uh, <laughs> show everyone what you did. Now, for our other two runner-ups, again, remember, you guys get a free course of your choice, either one of the ones that I've released or any of the ones that I will be releasing in the next couple of months, plus one hour session, and a one hour session with me. Now, before we finish this like uh, ceremony where I'm just giving away the prizes and announcing the win winners, I just want to thank everyone every single one of you my friends 37 of you participated in this first challenge and there were many more who added some progress works in progress but couldn't finish it hopefully on the next contest you guys can have some better time management there and make sure to submit a very amazing project and uh, we're gonna keep doing this we're gonna keep learning about 3d i'm gonna be i'm gonna keep showing you more stuff here in the youtube channel in twitch and we're gonna be doing more and more events remember that our schooltober is still going on so yeah that's pretty much it. Again, congratulations to every single participant. Congratulations to the top three winners. And now, if you wanna see the full review process and you wanna see every single one of them and what we thought about, just stick around so that you can see the full Twitch live stream. That's it for me today, my friends. I'll see you back on the next one. Hey, my friends. So we're about to begin with the full Twitch live stream. But before we do that, I do want to apologize to two people, Alpaca Master and my friend right here who created the Corrupted Ender staff. For some reason, during the live stream, I forgot to give you the live feedback of your stuff. So please send me a message through Discord. And I'm going to be more than happy to take 10 or 15 minutes, go in a private call with you, my friends, and give you my feedback directly there. Again, I apologize for this. The Hollow Trocar by Alpaca Pack and Master, a very, very fun zombie project, and the Corrupted Ender Staff by my friend right here, whose name I cannot see. But um, again, I'm really, really sorry for not mentioning you or not seeing you during the live stream. With that said, let's go to the full Twitch live stream. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this very special stream. Today, it's the final day of our Weapons of a Legend 3D Art Challenge. And I'm super happy to be here with all of you. We're live on Twitch. If you are watching this on YouTube later on, then hey what's up guys and today we're gonna be going over all of the different submissions that we have and uh, we're gonna be evaluating them i'm not gonna be saying the number i'm gonna be writing it down i'll show you my little document in just a second and um yeah that's pretty much it at the end we're gonna decide who the winner is and who the two runner-ups are as well so what's up guys we got m2ek we got aki senpai Says Mrs. Leal, a lucky woman. <laughs> she is, but I am even more um, fortunate to have her, to be honest. 
which is amazing. Good afternoon, Black Ops. What's up, my friends? Hello, yo, Ixruni and Mimar. First time chat over here. Amazing. Okay, so for those of you that were unaware, that were living under a rock here in our community, for the past month, we've started this Weapons of Legends 3D art challenge. And the challenge was simple. You had to create a weapon, a legendary weapon that only the most honorable heroes or the most fearsome villains could wield. Thank you for the follow, my friend, Black Ops. And the, the deal with this, or the, the main, or not the main issue, the main thing that we, I wanted to promote was creativity. So there are three things that we're going to eva be evaluating right now. The first of them is going to be the story. You had to create a story, a short story, a legend, a myth of where this weapon came from and why is it so important. So the story is going to be a one of the like um, like a grading values. The design itself is going to be another value, like how did you accomplish whatever thing you were going for and how well does it read, how well does it look as a, as a weapon, how functional it is, all this sort of stuff. And finally, we're going to have the technical side of things. This is a little bit more for all of you guys that are more advanced in the 3D stuff, but I wanted to create these other categories so that it was again, a, a fair opportunity for everyone, even if you're just a beginner, to be able to participate in this challenge. So yeah, let's go. We're going to start very like simply. I'm just going to go through the elements and I'm going to be giving my opinions. I'm going to give you a little bit of feedback. Remember that we're only going to be looking at the final image that was submitted on the post. That was part of the deal. And um, even though the works in progress and everything was amazing, we're only going to be evaluating the final image. Uh, any questions before we start, my friends? I got my Tim Horton over here. Tim Horton, if you're seeing this, please sponsor us. I love your coffee. And uh, well, let's start then with um, let's start all the way on the bottom. We're going to start from top to bottom. So the first one is going to be uh, this one right here. Now, another thing, if the asset is not finished, like in this particular case, we're not going to evaluate it uh, uh, wholly like it's it's not eligible to participate. But I'm still going to give a nice like little feedback of uh, of whatever is on the element out of respect of anyone who participated. We also had two like after time submissions the submissions were closed yesterday at 12 a.m uh, mexico time and there were a couple of submissions after that unfortunately my friends i cannot bend the rules and allow you to participate but i'm still going to be giving you feedback so don't worry about that and hopefully next time plan ahead a little bit earlier i never like to leave everything or anything until the last second because things like that could happen so this one is from uh a i don't see the full name and uh, this is what we're seeing here. It says, in the heart of the dystopian steampunk realm, the enigmatic Dr. Ignatius Sterling crafted the steam fire rifle. Fueled by the enigmatic Aetherium, the invention stands as humanity's final defense against marauding mechanical monstrosities. That's a very nice tongue twister there. Uh, all start with the letter M. With the world in peril, Dr. Sterling's creation is the last blazing hope for survival. That's very cool. I like that. It's like a sci-fi, steampunk, dystopian future. I feel like the design is a a little bit too busy like I'm, I'm looking at this uh, sketch right here i know that we don't have the final model which is a shame but it, it's uh it's too too busy usually when we're dealing with designs we always want to have a balance of complicated elements and simple elements so that when the audience looks at it it's a little bit easier to to understand so good job on this one my friend i would really like if you could finish it try to finish it on your own you might not be participating on the contest anymore but try to finish it so that we can uh, see a final model now we have Skullbreaker by Risa. Let's take a look at the image. That's nice. That's really cool. I really like the texture on the blade right there and the little like demon on the on the handle. Let's start with the story. It says, In the mystical realm of Eldoria, legends spoke of a fusion weapon known as the Skullbreaker, a creation forged in the heart of an ancient volcano by the skill hands of the legendary blacksmith Durak Flameforge. Nice. This imposing axe wielded unfathomable power capable of shattering the mightiest of heads with an unyielding force that struck without hesitation. The blade, crafted from the enchanted heartstone of the Fallen Star, possessed an innate ability to adjust its weight and edge, adapting to the strength and resistance of its target. That's very cool. And that's why I wanted you guys to write stories, because I want to see that inside of this thing right here. So if you tell me that this was uh, forged from the heart of a star, I can see some of that in this like magical pattern that we have on the element. However, I don't see the adaptability of the edge. 
what I would have decided in the design process, not the story in the design, would have probably been to change the symmetry of the axe. So you would have like this very broad edge on one side and maybe a smaller one on the other side. That way it makes sense that you can switch and, uh, and change from one point to the other. Uh, hello, hey, my name is Nenihar. I did the laser rifle. Awesome, man. Okay, cool. If you can finish it, man, that, that would be great because that was a very cool idea. The story was very nice, but we need to finish the model. Now, um, in, from a story perspective, I like this one. Let, let me get my little thing right here. There we go. Again, I'm not going to show this because then you guys are going to know. And I don't want to call the winner before we finished. So, hey, how can I close this? Hey, why is this not closing? Seems like my Discord got stuck. Give me a second. Ah, that's really weird. Let's go again. There we go. Why can't I close? Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to escape. It's not working. It's not my, it's not my first rodeo with a computer. Don't worry. <laughs> Oh, not that laser. I will see it later. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, let's uh, let's kill this Discord. Let's open it up again. Hopefully, Discord doesn't freaking crash um, during our stream. That would be that would be horrible. Okay, let's go over here. Weapons of Legend. There we go. So, from a from a story perspective, I like the story. I think it's a little bit traditional. Like it's, it, I'm not seeing anything that's extremely new or, or like a novelty. It's a very cool fantasy concept. But uh, for instance, like the the part where it's um, forged from the heart of a dying star or a fallen star in this case, that's like Thor's hammer, a background story as well. So it's always a good idea whenever you're thinking about the story to try to to create or add a little bit of like something, right? So for instance, let's say you wanted to do a star, like the the heart of a dying star or the or a fallen star. What about we say it's two stars. It's the heart of two stars that got welded or melded together when they fell in Earth or onto, onto Earth. And that's why one side can become really big and one side can become very small. And then you can invent the whole story of how this starts were the hearts of some old gods that loved each other and uh, and they sacrificed their, themselves to save the galaxy. I don't know. Like You can do like crazy stuff with a very basic premise, such as the fallen star, but try to add your own twist to it and see how can you make it unique. This is something that a very good friend of mine always says, he teaches creative writing. He says that there's nothing that hasn't been invented yet, like uh, every single story, every single drama, every single like uh, plot twist and things like that, they've all been invented. But how you tell that story, how you, how you convey that plot twist, how you develop the characters, that's the thing that's gonna be unique because each one of us has a different life experience. And therefore what we are able Able to to produce or to to share with the world is going to be different so keep that in mind next time when you're doing it so again story i like it design i feel like it's a little bit on the like edgy side of things um i i don't find thanks for the follow who's just follow very cast thanks for the follow man and uh, Dada torres you also followed and i forgot to give you your shout out there you go so Dada torres and Varikas, thank you very much, both of you guys. Vexus Fire, thanks for the follow, man. So, yeah, from a, from a design perspective, I like the, again, the runes and things that we have right here, but I don't like the handle. I, I'm not sure where I would be able to hold this thing because we have this sort of, like, core, this emissive core, and it's a little bit complicated to, to hold the weapon. So... Functional-wise, I'm not sure how, how good that would be, but um, it's, a, it's a cool concept. Now, on the technical side of things, I think, and I can I can say um, this with some certain level of confidence, I think you might be a, a beginner level artist. You might not, you, you might just started 3D, or maybe you started 3D not too long ago, because I can see like the barrel and I can see like the, the bump mapping, like there's some errors that we need to fix, but that's something that you're going to be increasing. So I would really, really like to um to give a, a a good like shout out to you my friend because even though you are still learning the very basics of 3d you took the chance and you went ahead and tried doing your weapon so 
what kind of things would i recommend of course i have the the, um, the premium course where i go over the whole process of creating a, an axe actually and that we go over bump mapping normal mapping displacement which i think could have helped here with the bricks and the and the floor right here we go over rendering cinematic rendering so all of those concepts those are tools that you're going to be adding to your 3d artist toolbox that are going to allow you to create things that look better and better so yeah congratulations on your on your execution here man on your idea very cool, Risa. Thanks for participating. And I got your numbers over here. I will publish the numbers uh, later today after we, um, well, uh, at the end, when we see who the winner is, I'm gonna show you who um, who got the highest uh, points and stuff. So that was Risa. Let's go now with, oh, it's very difficult when I can't see the name there. Can I see it here? No, it's kind of like, I'm not sure if it's like hidden or something. Well, it says, a secret war has been waging for too long, and after decades of stalemate between the forces of heaven and hell, the creation of ethereal weapons has shifted the tiles in favor of the former faction. After the war has ended, those weapons were rounded up and disposed of to prevent the misuse of such powerful artifacts. That's cool. However, few well-hidden pieces managed to survive, and this sword name of Ophahim's Woe is a living reminder of the devastating force that angels used to wield in that war. Forged from hardened obsidian, engraved with the ancient magical Enochian alphabet, and powered by an immortal Ophahim, this sword is more than capable of cutting down any full corporeal and ethereal alike. This is very cool. I like the story. I like, uh, like, oh, after wars, like, whenever you have a war, like a big war, and then society is starting to rebuild itself. In, in books, of course, not in the real world. War in the real world sucks. But um, in books, it's very cool to see how people find the sort of, like, lost artifacts and, and do, like, interesting things. So this one, I really like the story. I think it's a it's a it's a cool story. I'm gonna I'm gonna add the name of the sword because otherwise it's gonna be difficult for me to find the name of the of the artist. So it's called Ophaim's Woe. So I think this is a good story. Design wise, I'm not sure, and I'm gonna tell you why. Usually swords are not meant to have an empty core because that's the part that's going to receive most of the force, right? So if you have two very slim swords and then you have this sort of like bridge connecting them, it can be a little bit on like non-functional. However, I like the colors. I like the obsidian idea using, using like a stone as a, as a base. I don't see the edge right now. So this looks very cardboardy. I, I, I guess that's a little bit on the, on the technical side of things as well. Also, the render to me seems very, very, very flat. I, I always recommend guys, and we've been we've gone over this several times here in YouTube, here in YouTube and in every single part where I give feedback. Always try to add at least a three-point light setup. The three-point light setup is like the, the easiest way to just make something look a little bit nicer. Also, keep in mind that if you're using an object that has metallic surfaces, this one seems to be made out of some metals, you need an HDRI, you need an environment to reflect those surfaces. Otherwise, you're not gonna get the nice like shines or the nice like um like uh, reflections that we're looking for but it's a good one man congratulations on ophiams whoa very cool let's go with varvas varvas didn't finish i saw this one varvas i hope you can finish this one man because it was looking very very cool the skull right here was looking very 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 nice um but uh yeah we need to finish it, so hopefully we'll see it later. Maybe we'll do another Weapons of Myth or something like that uh, next year as a sort of like revenge for all of those that couldn't finish this time around. So, well, let's continue now. Sinji! Sinji! Sinji was one of the first ones to submit his stuff. And uh, he submitted this a sci-fi weapon. It says the blue super supersonic echo axe and NASA and military technology for effortlessly splitting any material. <laughs> I like that. You should have called that the MT M or a tes Tesma or something like. Yeah, find a, a fun word to to incorporate all of these things because that's a that's a cool name. It says the Vibrax equipped with advanced NASA and military technology features a special alloy of titanium steel and GFK glass fiber reinforced plastic and possesses the remarkable ability to effortlessly split any material using ultrasound. That's very cool. Kind of reminds me of the little cutter that they use when you like break an arm or a leg and they're like cutting the cast. Um, that supersonic thing that they, they they do something similar. The free man. Thanks for the follow man and welcome to the stream so story 
I don't get the story. I get a description of the of the Birex, which is cool, but we didn't really get a story. I wanted to know who came up with this, why did they come up with the idea, or who used this version of the Birex to you know survive or something. It reminds me a lot of like Dead Space and uh, maybe like Mass Effect things like that. So I, I really like the design. I think you have a really clean design right here. The modeling it does from a technical point of view. I do feel like you didn't do this game ready because. It does look very smooth so it looks like a subdivision surface element we would need to see a a wireframe to make sure that's why the works in progress were a good idea to to see or make sure that you guys were following that rule which was make it game ready but even nowadays it is possible to um to have like a lot of polygons on your on your games and that's not that big of a deal the render so from a design perspective I'll, I'll give you like a really high point right here because it's it's really clean it's really nice i like the, the design but yeah roma there uh, i i agree that the render is not ideal and i'm gonna give you three reasons why this render is not ideal you're cutting the weapon like we're not seeing the base of the weapon and we're not seeing the point of the weapon over here you're adding all of this information right here i'm not sure if the instructions were not clear enough um, I'm always here to, of course, clarify them if there's any question, but you didn't need to do this. Like you could have only a render with the axe and the story as a separate thing. It definitely needs a few light scenarios. Yep, that's right. It's a little bit too dark, which for a cinematic shot, like I imagine this thing maybe like floating on a capsule at the end of like a like starship, like rail or something, and you're going to go grab it. If it's just like levitating, then yeah, it will look like very, very cool um the logo is very cool yeah i agree um the logo looks nice i would definitely keep the logo i don't think it's it's that bad um but yeah that's um like this whole like text is, is just taking away from your from your element it needs a light in the front of not behind i mean if, if you want to do this or like intense light like just from the top and from the bottom i feel like it could be a good contrast for a cinematic scene like if you're again in the game and you're about to grab it and it looks like this i think it might be cool but if it's gonna be a presentation like this then yeah i would probably do a slightly different approach it's not super dark though like we can still see the details uh, on here but i would definitely like just modify the the render a little bit so yeah that was a sinister sinister grief Let's go now with GL666. Okay, we got a, a long story here. That's fine. Let's take a look at this. It says, backstory, thousands of years ago, Atlantis was one of the wealthiest and most advanced regions in the world. Atlantis was protected by a group of highly skilled wizards. Among them was Arion, who was entrusted with the responsibility of safeguarding the city's precious energy source. Three gems stood imbued with the power of three natural elements, water, fire, and wood. Interesting. That's interesting because wood is not always um, what's the word? Word is wood is not always a, a basic element, but I've seen it in in, in certain elements. Um, let's see. Arion crafted the staff of element, elemental magic to ensure that the power of the three gemstones was used effectively and safely. The staff was made from mystical wooden material and contained three gemstones and energy cores deeply embedded with it. Each gemstone represented one of the elements and held special powers. Water element. It's the water element. It had the ability to control and summon water, helping to cool and protect the Atlantis from droughts and flooding threats. The fire it carried the power of fire and could be used to protect the Atlantis from foreign invasions or to melt ice hindrances. Interesting. Um, oh, welcome there. Oh, there you go, Jeremy. Thanks for the sub, man. Thanks for the sub. Uh, or for the gift sub, of course. Uh, wood element would uh, used to create and maintain the lush greenery and abundance in Atlantis, providing a source of food and rich vegetation. And thanks for the follow. The character Arian wielded the staff of elemental magic with the ability to harness the powers of all three elements to protect Atlantis from external threats and maintain the seed of prosperity. He became a legend in Atlantis history, remembers a great wizard and protector of the nation. Okay, so... Yeah, this story, I find it's a, it's cool, but it's very generic, right? Like, it's fantasy, it's the elements, and, and I always find, again, that it's important to try to break the mold. Like, why do we want these three particular elements? How are we going to combine them together? How did these elements came into existence for this particular staff? That sort of stuff. Uh, from the execution, I'm going to say this is not a great execution. This looks... Like, uh, like maybe you're just, again, learning the basics of 3D, and um, it definitely needs more work. I'm not seeing the fire, I'm not seeing the water, I'm not seeing the wood. It, it, it just looks like a very simple, like, staff. And, and to be honest, it looks very, not only simple, it looks very minimalistic, which, based on this very advanced story, this is like a, like, 
I'm not gonna say like it's on the level of Lord of the Rings, of course, but it has a lot of like background things and elements that you might want to incorporate. And of course, the execution is not great. The render is also not great. But again, I'm, I'm trying to be as honest as possible, and and I don't wanna I don't want this to sound harsh. Okay, I'm not. Um, Remember that whenever someone criticizes your art, they're criticizing the art, not the artist. So it's it's the critique goes towards the piece and not you as an artist, okay, my friend? So in case you're hearing this and you feel like you could have done something better, that's the moment that you need to look inside yourself and be like, okay, what do I need to learn to make this even better? Do I need to improve my technical skills in ZBrush? Do I need to improve my... Um, I don't know, my rendering skills, where can I learn that? Of course, we have some like softwares and, and, and premium courses that you can check. But the thing is, you're in the beginning stages. And I can see right here, it says, this is the first event I have joined. I hope you like this. I like it. But again, you need to keep going. Keep growing and, and make sure that the next time we have one of these events, your submission is going gonna, is gonna to be even better than this. So, let's see. Ryan, Ryan sent me a message earlier or yesterday. He was mentioning that he has been very busy and he couldn't finish this weapon, which was looking amazing. This was a very cool weapon. It's uh, like sort of bone, demonic, sort of like sword or, or gun. I'm not even sure. It looks more like a sword, but it was looking very cool. So Ryan, hopefully you can finish this eventually and uh, and do a great piece because I think this is a great concept. It's definitely edgy. I mean, it feels like uh, something that you would find in like, I don't know, like Dark Souls or something like that or uh, Dark Siders. Uh, but it's very, very cool, Ryan. So, so make sure to finish it because it, it's definitely worth it. Solinari. Nice. Look at this. I like this one. This one is very cool. I like, I like the design. I'm going to start with the design right here. I like the design because it's not very common that we see thin weapons. Usually when we're doing or when we see games, game uh, weapons tend to be like very brute, very big, like just like hefty like elements or swords or hammers and things like that. So this one in particular I like because it's slim. So I could imagine like a Valkyrie using it, like a female paladin using it. Um, I, I remember there was this game. Do you guys play Fire Emblem? Of course you guys play Fire Emblem, right? One of my favorite games is Fire Emblem Awakening. I know it's very fan service and stuff. I know some older fans are going to be like, oh, that's just like, how can you say that? But one of my favorite units from this one was Cordelia. And she used a lance, right? So it was very, very cool having this sort of like strong female um, like knight doing just like amazing things. So if you haven't played this one, dude, like get an emulator or something. It's an amazing game. I hope they re relaunch it for the Switch or something later on, but that's it's just an amazing game. So this one I really like from a, from a design perspective. It's really, really cool. And you did an amazing thing that's not very easy, especially if you're just beginning. It's not very easy. Konya Tour, thanks for the follow, which are the wings. You, I believe you use transparency here for the wings because there seems to be like a soft grading going along them. That looks very nice. This letters as well, this sort of like angelic script, like Cyrillic, I don't even know what, what language that is. That's also very cool. That's just a plane. It's probably just a plane with transparency again and a little bit of a missive. Very, very nice. So from a, a design perspective, I'm going to give you full points because this is just a great design. I, I really like it. Um, I actually like this render the most, but I, I, I appreciate that you went for this final render because it's uh, the one that we need to see to see the full thing. But this is the kind of stuff that you could see in a close-up in the game. So that's really, really cool. Now let's take a look at the story. During the period of time known as the fall of Satan, many blinding flashes of light like lightning fell from the heavens, and the roaring of thunder shook the earth to its core. The angel's sword staff must have made its way into the mortal world. Excerpt from the Holy Chronicles. That's very nice. I'm, I'm, I'm reading um, Brandon Sanderson. I've been reading it this past year, and I just started the, um, the Stormlight Archives. And he does this. He does. He did this in Mistborn as well, where every chapter he starts with like a like a little lore dump or something from something unrelated, and then everything just gets connected, which is just amazing. It was found on a cloudy day by a mere farm boy sticking out of the chest of a demon's corpse. Its holy blade brings certain death to creatures of evil, for with even the slightest touch, they are consumed with sacred flames burning into nothingness that's great that's a great story i like the story of of uh, how they found it i would have liked to see a little bit of how they 
um, of this weapon in particular, like who's who did it belong to? Was it an important angel? Who is this boy? Like something, right? Because right now we get a little bit more story of the war again, of the battle and how this weapon was important to that battle, but we don't get a lot of information about the weapon itself. But other than that, that's very, very cool. See, sorry, I'm gonna confess something. I've always wanted to be a voice actor. I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't think I could do it, to be honest, because I'm, I'm a little bit shy when doing voices. But I enjoy doing a lot of weird voices when we're playing um, Dungeons and Dragons with my with my friends. So, hey, who knows? Maybe. <laughs> I, I do the voice acting for the productions that we do on the studio. So, so if you go to the Desert Museum here in, in Saltillo and you, you try our VR experiences, the voice is me. It's like, hey, I'm Marlo. Welcome to this and whatever, this experience. We're going to be going to the dinosaurs. And I do this like a uh, funny, funny robot voice. It's, uh, it's fun. It's fun. <laughs> Varvas, Ghost Axe. Oh, wait, you did continue, Bart. Is this the same one? Varvas? Yeah, it's the same one. Okay, so so Barbas did continue, but again, I don't think he finished it. At least I don't see the finished result on the other ones. So you have to finish it, Barbas. It's looking very nice. Like, look at this, guys. He's got a great design. It's very World of Warcraft, very stylized, very cool. So that one's really nice. Let's see. Corey Smitherson. I'm going to be honest, guys. When I saw this weapon, I was like, damn, that's an amazing idea. Corey Smithereens says, Backstory, the stained glass sword, very interesting concept, was forged by members of a cult called the Sightless. The cult members lived underground in cavernous mazes that were pitch black and dangerous. Well, let, let, let's go into, into fantasy mode. <clears throat> Several members of the Sightless discovered a glowing crystal that was stronger than any steel they've ever seen. After taking a broken chunk of the crystal ore home, the cultists had to use molten lava to shape the crystal into an iridescent weapon that will help them traverse the dark caves they dwelt in. The sword and the story are both my own creations made using Maya and Substance Painter, says Cory's Mithris. This is amazing, Cory. This looks really, really, really nice. I think the design is a very unique design. And if you did the stained glass, the stained glass by yourself, that's great. I do think the pommel and the and the handguard right here could use a little bit more work on the design uh, side of things, but it's really, really, really nice. Story-wise, I think, again, we could have just gone a little bit higher on the story, just like something extra to, to understand how powerful this is. Like, why is this weapon so intense? Maybe when you put it in front of you and you see through the stained glass, you see the true essence of whatever it is you're trying to attack or something. Like, that sort of elements is the kind of stuff that, that can really add that little extra extra point in the story and on the back, or the backstory, rather, of weapons like this to, to really make them shine. So, the sign, I love the stained glass. The stained glass is one technique that I've always liked. It, it's a very beautiful uh artwork and i think you managed to capture it nicely from the technical side of things i think we could have played a little bit more with transmission for instance to really make it seem like a stained glass right now the only thing that's giving me the stained glass vibes is all of this like um like sections or like cells that we have but other than that we we don't really see it made out of a glass and again the pommel it's a very simplistic pommel i would decorate it a little bit more especially because we have a very heavily decorated one and then just keep the handguard a little bit nicer Careful whenever you're using textures such as this one. The rendering, it's a little bit flat. I would added, I would have added a couple more lights to, to make the render a little bit more appealing. But it's a really, really cool, uh, cool idea. Just a little bit more contrast, I would say. If you make the whole scene darker and you really let this thing glow and then just have like a like a spotlight shining on a specific part, I think that could have made it uh, look very, very cool. From, Buck, from doctor to 3D artist to voice actor. That would be an amazing life, wouldn't it? <laughs> Let's go with Shanks. Do we have a finished product? We do. Wow, this looks really nice. Eric's Redemption. That's Shanks' sword right here. Okay, let's look at the, at the technical things and at the, and at the design first. So from a technical standpoint, I think that some elements are looking a little bit wobbly. When I mean or when I, when I mention the wobbly word, that means that... They're not looking as, as defined as they should. So, for instance, this bandage right here, it just looks like a lumpy piece of clay that has a bandage texture, but it doesn't really look like a bandage. Same thing for, for this, like, golden thing right here. We need to really, really make sure that the edges are as clean and as nice as possible to make sure that we're conveying that uh, information. 
However, I I really appreciate the fact that you went for a very, very, very complex handguard right here. It's not easy to retopologize. I can see this is a game asset due to the, the low poly that we have in certain areas, like the edges on this top part and over here, even here on the facet, um, like horns. So this is very, very cool. It's definitely a two-handed sword. I do feel rendering-wise, it's, it's definitely a little bit flat i'm not seeing the metal it looks a little bit more like plastic so again i would play with the with the sort of um reflections that you're using i'm not sure what software you're using to render this it kind of looks like maya but i'm not sure or maybe blender now this thing that you did right here the capes and the and the sparks this is of course photoshop uh, post-production i don't like that i i i used to do that like if you go to my art station to my old portfolio you're gonna see some pieces where i did that but after learning that it doesn't really look that good it, it looks a little bit more professional if you just keep it like black completely black or just like a dark gray or something so that we can really see the weapon or do something else to to really make it um really make it more more interesting so from a presentation, it's a, it's a good presentation, but again, that things I, I don't like as much. The sign, it's a little bit heavy. I can see this in, in like a Tales of Arise sort of thing or Tales of uh, of Vesperia, like all of this uh, Japanese RPGs where they are like really, really crazy designs. I love those games, by the way. One of my favorite franchises, it's uh, Xenoblade Chronicles. So I could see like a bad guy from Xenoblade using like super something super complex like this. It also looks a little bit as... Um, What's the word? That's like Warhammer. I'm not sure. I'm not a huge Warhammer fan, so I'm, I wouldn't be able to say if that's the design line. But it looks nice. It looks nice. Now let's take a look at the at the history. During the Dark Ages, a cursed knight named Eric Blackthorn lived and wandered the empty line empty land in search of redemption. An ancient promise bound Eric and his only hope to break the curse lay in a difficult quest to retrieve the skulls of the elder goats. <laughs> okay. Mythical creatures said to hold a key to his forgiveness. After facing countless after facing countless challenging trials, Eric finally arrived at a hidden mountain sanctuary where the elder goats resided. In a serious and magical agreement, the Elder Goats willingly sacrificed their skulls to make a powerful blade. The sword, known as Redemption Sword, held the skulls of both Elder Goats, one at its front and one at its back. It became Eric's weapon and his path to making changes. The Redemption Sword was said to have the power of the Elder Goats' souls, granting it u its user great strength and the rare ability to tell what is true or what is false. However, as they say, with great power comes great responsibility. Eric Blathorn now had to navigate a world full of uncertain morals and hidden truths, using the double skull sword to bring balance back to the land lost in the chaos. Okay, cool. I like the idea of the goats. That's very unique. I've never heard something like that. Um, it reminds me a little bit of Odin's story where he went to Yggdrasil and he sacrificed one of his eyes to get like the unlimited knowledge or something. So, so I like that. A anytime a hero has to go get something, um, you probably have, you, have you guys heard they, they call that the MacGuffin, which is like just the, the magical thing that they need. It's just something that they need to, to get there. Right. And, um, I like that. I, I do see the goat skull, which is cool. The only thing I would have probably done in that case is either change the color. So one skull was one color and the other one was a different color or change the horns. You could have like a ram with like curved horns and then like a, another type of thing with like the pointy horns or something so that you know that they were two different uh, goats, right? Like yin and yang sort of stuff. Also naming the goats would have been a good idea. But the story, I like the story. I like that story. That's a that's a cool story. Let's see, let's now go with uh, this one. Again, I don't see the name. I don't know why Discord does this, where it has some of the names. But this one is the other, oh, Kislyar, Kislyar Masters, Kislyar. Kislyar. Last year's in Russian Telegram channels and YouTube channels, anyone could witness an enormous amount of advertisement for so-called legendary finish knife of NKVD made by Kislyar Masters. The aggressiveness of the ads turned this in a pure meme in Runet, despite the fact that only two things those that were supposed to cut are the air and the wallet of a customer. This tiny thing became a part of popular culture. Okay, that's a funny story. That's a more like a humorous take on the story, which is uh, it's, it's fine. I like that. I like that. So. From a, from a render perspective, I think this is a really clean render. I like it. We can see the object. We can see a little bit of an environment with this little cloth. Um, textures look very clean. It's a, it's a good render. It's a really, really good render. From technical perspective, it's a good object, but I do feel it's a simple object. I, I'm not seeing any, or actually from a design perspective, rather, rather I, I don't see anything that's extremely unique, if you know what I mean. Like, I'm sure if I went to, to like, a, a market, maybe, in any of this, uh, like, Russian 
or Eastern Europe countries, I might find something similar to this. And that is what makes the design... I'm not sure what the word would be. It's not simple because it's a cool design, but it's just uh, common, maybe? Like, we, I would need to see something a little bit more on this. Maybe a different kind of engraving on the pommel. Maybe a different kind of... Um, like detail on the blade that kind of stuff could really help push this design or the execution rather of this piece a little bit further up because again it's like it's it's well executed but it's just simple like i could see this in any counter strike in any call of duty and i wouldn't bat an eye like this is one of the default uh, knives that the russian um like uh, units have right like it's not something that you're gonna be like chasing as an achievement or something to 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 do it uh, Sarn says, feels like some issues with UV. I, I think it's brushed metal. I'm not sure if... Oh, well, maybe there a little bit. I'm not sure. But yeah, other than that, I, I don't see a lot. I, again, I think this one really needs something on the design to set it apart from everything else. But congratulations on that one, KSDR. Let's go with The Ancestor's Hammer by David A.H. David over here. The Ancestor Hammer. Okay, let's take a look at the at the design and the render, and we'll take a look at the story in just a second. So design wise, I like it. I really like the the like dinosaurs or dragons that we have down here. I guess this is like dragons. This is nice. I like. I really like the course. Like, you, can you guys see what he did right here on the on the pommel or on the handle rather? That is really nice where it really looks like the, the things are interlinked. That's not, it's not super difficult, but it takes time. So I appreciate that you took the time to do that. Same for this like leather straps right here. Even, ah, you even added the little knots right here again to, to indicate that the ropes, um, they, they generate that. Sort of, yeah, again, from a technical point of view, I think this is really well presented. I could definitely see this in a game. I just think that the modeling is a little bit soft so we don't have as many hard edges i would like to see some hard edges and the material is a little bit flat so i would add a little bit more dirt a little bit more rust or something especially on the stone because right now the stone just looks like a big chunk of concrete or something so just add a little bit more to to really like get some more um more stuff there let's see any sneak peek to the new contest? <laughs> yeah, Sarn says we need to roll out the, fee the the new course first, which is which is this this weekend. I'll I'll show you a, a preview of, of what we're doing in in, in a second. I, I got the I'm in the last chapter. I'm recording the last chapter already, so so it's it's gonna be over very very soon. Uh, it's a Maya course. It's an introduction Maya course. I've mentioned that before, but I'll show you the little like sneak peek uh, throughout the throughout the stream. So let's take a look at the story. It says the ancestors. <laughs> let's go. Let's go into into mood. It says, the Ancestor's Hammer was a legendary weapon. Imbued with ancient dwarf magic, it had the power to forge magical metals and create works of art copied throughout the world. It stood as a symbol of the strength and prosperity of the stone forgers. That's very cool. One day, while the dwarves were busy with their daily task within the mountain, a malevolent giant troll known as Gromar the Destroyer, the Destroyer infiltrated their underground home. Gromar, with his supernatural strength, managed to take the Ancestor's Hammer from its ceremonial pedestal and taunted the dwarves who attempted to stop him. The ensuing battle was epic. The dwarves fought valiantly against the troll, but Gromar proved to be a formidable adversary. In the midst of the struggle, the Ancestor's Hammer broke into two. The dwarves, although devastated by the loss of their most precious treasure, continued to fight courageously. Even if in its broken state, the Ancestor's Hammer retained some of its magic. When Gromar attempted to wield it against the dwarves, the hammer emitted a burst of energy that sent him reeling, leaving him severely wounded. The dwarves, seizing the opportunity, managed to drive the troll out of their homeland. However, Gromar, stubborn and obsessed with the hammer's power, did not give up so easily. After fleeing the mountain, the troll retreated to his secret lair and began working on repairing the ancestor's hammer in an unorthodox manner. Despite not, being a, uh, despite not being a blacksmith expert, Gromar demonstrated incredible, incredible tenacity. Finally, after several failed attempts and with the aid of the dark magic he had learned, Gromar succeeded in repairing the hammer, although it was now shorter and had a rough appearance compared to its original state. The hammer was no longer the majestic work of art it once was, but it still retained some of its ancient power. Okay, now with that... One thing that we're definitely, definitely missing here, it's some damage. 
Like this doesn't seem like a broken hammer. I was gonna say this looks like a new hammer, like someone just created or or, or forged this hammer. And if it's supposed to be destroyed, we need to see that destruction. That's where story and design really need to meet each other. And if you say something on the story, you need to back it up with the information or with the justification on the story side of things. So we need to see a little bit more destruction and we need to see the magic. You're mentioning dark magic. So is it a rune that's holding it together? Is it some like a like purple, green, dark, like something? Like, that's the kind of stuff that we really need to to set in our... Like, if we are going to include it in the story, we really need to portray that or include that in our renders as well. But that's a cool story. I like it. So, congratulations on that one as well, my friend. Let's go with Daniel Cooey. Daniel Cooey with this, the Adjudicator. Um, I'm going to play the video just because you added it, but we're going to use this as the final render. Okay, that's cool. Wireframe, perfect. Yeah, that's nice. This is a great portfolio piece, by the way. Whenever you do a breakdown like that, that's great for, for portfolio. But this is the render. Again, I'm I'm they, they found my weak spot, even though I never said it, but I really like thin slender weapons every now and then because they look very, very fancy, very, very nice. This also looks like this sort of like angelic um spear, which is very, very cool. Isliar is the name of the city where they're making those knives. Oh, there you go, comrade. Thanks for the for the info. Yeah, this was the, the, the knife that we were talking about. This one right here. Okay, let's take a look at the story. The Adjudicator is the holy demon slaying weapon held by the high priest of the Corinthian Council. Forged from iridescent Damascus gold, the weapon possesses great purifying properties that allows its user to effortlessly hold off any demonic attackers. Passed down through generations of high priests since the Great Demon Wars, the Adjudicator is a symbol of imperial judgment and martial authority. Yeah, this is great. I really like the design. I do feel like um, like we could have sharpened some of the edges just a little bit more. I like this sort of like Damascus steel feel that we get right here. For those of you that have never seen that, I mean, most of you have seen like that sort of stuff. But Damascus steel is a, is a type of uh, welding process and, and forging process that they do where they create a little bands. Um, they, they create like layers upon layers upon layers of metal and then when they cut it or when they do this you get this sort of like very cool pattern uh i've seen some like um like samurai swords as, as well um forged in this way and it looks very very sexy um depending on the, on the on the angle at which you cut you're gonna get slightly different results but it's always this sort of like patterns which again it's thanks to all of the layers that you do when when forging i've never forged a weapon but that's what i've seen <laughs> online and in videos so yeah this is really cool I like it. I think the render is good, but not great. And and I'm saying this in a nice way. Like it's a it's a good render, but since it's a very clean weapon, I think we could push the render just a little bit higher to really get it there. Story wise, I think the story is is fine. I like it. I really like again the the design of this thing, and um and the and the render it could just just a little bit of an extra help. I, I'm not sure what maybe again you know, like a pedestal or like just some like a like a god god race or something on top i think that would be that would be interesting for that one ah give me just one second guys before i lose my voice uh, 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 um oh, let me just answer one quick message from the office just one second Okay, so let's go with the next one. This is a D-Chained Hell. Again, we're only going to look at one of them. If you guys want to check all of the other renders, you're free to join our Discord channel. Which, by the way, if you're not on the Discord, what are you waiting for? David's going gonna, gonna, to um, drop the link in just a second so that you guys can join if you're not there. So let's take a look at the story. It says, The Chain Hell. Legend has it that in a deep and protected vault resides the soul of the seven major demons embodied in a weapon of incalculable power. <laughs> seven demons in a weapon, that's, that's a lot. <laughs> it is said that only the one who has committed each of the seven deadly sins can try to tame that sword that has a life of its own. But it takes much more than that for this whispering and fiery carrier of hell. Not to finish with your mind little by little. Some ancient tongues speak that only uh, Nephilim will be able to carry this weapon and that if he succeeds, he will be the most powerful being on earth as he carries the power of each of the major demons at will. The weapon is protected by Tyrael himself, whereabouts unknown. With the divine bolt 
Would the divine goodness of an angel Nephilim be the bearer of this powerful for, of this powerful sword, or will it be a servant of the underworld that will bring fire and destruction to our world? Okay, that's very cool. I like it. Now I feel like this is the render you wanted to show because this is the one at the top, so I'm gonna go with this one. Um I think the story is is uh, like too high up. What what do I mean by this? Whenever you're planning something, you always need to ask yourself what is a stake, right? Like what are the stakes of this particular story? And the stakes of this sword is everything, right? You're you're pretty much saying this is the most evil sword ever. So once this is conquered, once this sword is conquered, there's usually nothing else after that. It's going to be very difficult to top this and, and create a story or continue developing the story with something bigger. That's why usually they will do something like this is the sword, the envy sword, and it's a very powerful sword, but there's also the lost sword and there's also the greed sword. And eventually, once the hero destroys all of the swords, all of the spirits combine into the final sword, which is the last chapter, right? Like the last thing that they need to beat. If you start this high, again, it's very difficult to go higher. So just be mindful about that when, when planning your stories. You always want to try to find the scale. And then um, Dungeons and & Dragons and Pathfinder, they, they have this. It's very cool. They, they have this called Tears of Play, where you go from level 1 to 20, and it's divided into level into 5 levels, pretty much. So from level like 1 to 5, 5 to 10, 10 to 11, 11 to 12, or to 20, or sorry, 15 to 20. And uh, depending on what tier of play you're at, it's kind of like the story you're telling. On the first tier, you're just like a local hero. You're saving someone from a goblin's cave. You're maybe killing a, I don't know, like a yeti that's uh, like terrorizing the village or something. On the second one, you become like a regional sort of hero where there's like a, maybe a group of orcs that's about to attack the, the villages and you stop that uh, invasion. At the third level, at the third tier of play, you go into like kind of like international sort of uh, room where there's like i don't know like very powerful old dragon trying to destroy the whole continent and then you save it and on the final level of play that's like the cosmic sort of like level of elements where god is missing and all of the evil is coming out from hell and you need to stop that right so so this sword sounds like that level of play like one of the last levels of play which is fine but just keep in mind that there's no way to go down or to go lower after that um I, one very particular critique right here it's very difficult to read this one like the font that you picked is a little bit too busy too like noisy so especially because i can make it bigger right now uh it's definitely a little bit complicated so keep in mind what type of uh, font you guys use on your productions that's also another thing that could potentially add or like give you or take away points when someone is saying this what's on the fabric that that is the story like that's the story of the of the um, of the weapon on the fabric there, there seems to be some symbols. I'm not sure if you meant that symbol or that fabric. Now, uh, from a technical... For, for the presentation is nice. Um, so, so presentation... Wait, I did not write your name. David Torres. So, the presentation is nice. I like it. We're definitely on the beginning stages of the 3D uh, world. Like, I would love to see, like, a sort of, like, a fade here on the ground. So, it's not, like, a straight cut. Uh, another type of light source might also be interesting. It definitely looks like hand painted or like you went for um for hand painted <laughs> yeah no worries man dada torres no hay problema no hay problema um party but welcome man so i would i would probably change again the light maybe a rim light because right now everything looks very warm we have a lot of like a warm lights coming from the sword of course but i can see like there's a spotlight or something so maybe like a cool rim light on this side to give it a little bit more contrast that could be a, a potentially good idea and uh but yeah that's good man Good stuff, David. Let's now go with uh, the Freeman. Freeman. It says, In the distant past, the world was protected by ancient witches who defended the innocent from evil creatures. Thanks to them, the Bonner War could pr prosper to the state that it has today. But uh, there you go. We got to our follower goal today. Method to Twitch. Thanks, man. Thank you, my friend, for joining um, as time changes, the dangers and the way to fight them change as well. Now those ancient witches are now called magic girls, and your classic staffs now look like modern weapons, such as the staff of a particular magic girl who just got introduced to this new world of magic, conflict, and bullets. Lots of bullets. Magical Gatling. <laughs> That's nice. I mean, I, I like the story. It, it kind of reminds me of... Um, um, how There was a game that was similar where, where you got like, teleported like up or forward in time or something like that. 
the friend that I was talking about, the, the guy who writes uh, comics, he created a comic uh, several years ago. I'm not sure if he finished it, where there's like this revolutionary girl that comes into the, into the, like she's from the past and she goes into the future, into like modern times, and she's wearing like carabines and stuff like that. It's very cool. So uh, the story is fun. I, I like this story. I think it's a, it's a cool story. Having the, the like modern witches adapt to modern tools. But the design, I think that that's where we are left with something that's very, again, very simple. I don't see anything that tells me which. It just says a magical slayer, but I don't see, I don't see runes. I don't see any sort of like design anything. So it's a little bit difficult to tell. Like this could just be like Jinx's weapon or something. It's it's uh, it's just a Gatling gun, and I don't really again see um, anything else. I would love to see the bullets as well. We don't see any bullets. Maybe the bullets are like magic potions or something that could make it look a little bit more magical. Because right now. It just looks like a Gatling gun. From a technical side of view, it also seems like we're doing a little bit of uh, subdivision stuff first, not not game ready asset because uh, elements are very very smooth. It might be inside of the of the triangle counter limit that we added, but again, it's uh, it's a little bit difficult to tell without more images. Rendering wise, again, very simple render, which I know I just mentioned that that's the kind of stuff that I like, but I think I'm willing to bet that you took this render inside of Substance Painter, and the the reason why I'm willing to bet that is because there's a lens flare right here, and that's a very common post effect that you can add in the um, in the um, in Substance Painter, and. I've always told my students, Substance Painter is not the place to do renders. You should do um, you should do something more interesting in Maya, Marmoset, or other softwares, okay? So, so be careful with that. That was the free man. Let's go with Gladius Draco. This is... Uh, I don't see the name of the artist. So I'm just gonna have this as Gladius... Draco. There we go. In a world where everyone thinks that all dragons disappeared, only one person with the sword, Gladius Draco, can find them and return them to their colony and defeat their longtime enemy, Diaboli, with a green gem on it, which will light once it's close to a dragon. Okay. I understand. I'm going to use this one since it's like the, or actually, I'm going to use this one since it's like the full render. Um,. This that you included here, I wouldn't consider that a story. That's more like a premise. So the difference between a backstory or a story and a premise is that a premise is, is preparing you for what is going to happen. It's like a synopsis from a movie, right? When you go to the movies and you see like a little text of what the movie is about, that's a premise. Like here I'm seeing a premise. The story is is one of the things that I would I would encourage you to go for. It's like how was this sword made? Okay? Like if this is a sword, how was it made? Now here, was go, here goes the design. From a design perspective, this doesn't look like a sword. This looks like a dagger. Why? Because the pommel is very big. So I would imagine that I'm going to hold pretty much the whole pommel with my hand. Otherwise, you would need like super huge hands to, to hold this green area where the, the sword would be. So either make the whole pommel smaller and the, and the, and the hand guard smaller or make the whole sword bigger. That game, don't worry, man. Yes, the review is going to be... Um, Okay, give me one moment, and I'm going to skip on um, towards yours on this next one, so that you don't leave and you see it live, okay? Just just let me finish this one, and I'll, and I'll, take, uh, I'll, I'll take yours after. So, yeah. Now, rendering-wise, again, not ideal. And I'm going to do this. I did this. This was one of the first videos that I released on the channel, on the YouTube channel, when we started, like, three months ago. And, um... And the thing is, you guys did not, uh, maybe not everyone saw it, but it's just a three-point light setup instead of Blender. Like, it's the most simple way to do it, and you're going to get an amazing result and an amazing render that's going to just look good. It might not be the most amazing render. It's not going to look cinematic or anything, but it's just going to look clean and good. Because, again, this one right here, look at all of these artifacts that we're seeing on the on the gray elements. So I'm going to take a look at some of the images. Like, those artifacts, that's just bad compression, bad render settings, just, like... Things that we should be very careful about when we're presenting things because we're not presenting this in the best possible way. So again, design, there's a couple of things that we need to look at, my friend. And um, also story, we need to go for a, a, a better story, not just a, what's the word, not just a, a premise of what's going to happen. Okay, let's go with Nat Kirby. You said yours is the Waymaker. We're going to go up uh waymaker there we go let's take a look at the lore it says waymaker is a standard issue heavy duty mining saw heavily modified by the great engineer of jay moore on the planet of Sion. 
Jay were actively working as a field. Jay was uh, I, that's a small uh, English correction. Jay was actively working as a field engineer in the deep mines of Sion when the exploration team encountered the Deep Dwellers, a society of alien species hiding in plain sight from the humans all of these years. The Deep Dwellers used the rock hard armor as a camouflage, while the deeply burned a rare earth and not so rare Sion metals were the source that powered them. Okay, the neodymium and other metals had been arranged in such a way it acted as a signal jammer, emitting only noise to the rest of the solar system. That's very cool. That that's a really clever solution for the for why people didn't find them. Thus, the engineering explanation team did not expect the resistance of the deep dwellers and had not spent precious fuel and storage to bring any firearms. Jay, on the other hand, an avid hunter back home and an un <laughs> with an unhealthy interest of explosives since childhood, came up with a solution to the problem of overly aggressive Sion inhabitants who needed to be eradicated, or at least pushed back long enough for the cavalry to kick in. Using the advanced machinery of the exploration teams, Lander Workshop, he built his this contraption on the base of the battery power heavy duty mining saw. He fitted a forward underhand grip on the pivot of the blade. He welded two gas pipes together and machined the ends of to match a battery power firing device, essentially building a combined shotgun saw. <laughs> okay. For the daily task, the barrels were rotated 180 degrees to fold into the body of the tool. The human exploration team could now continue their work without major interruptions. Upon encounter with the deep dwellers, the shotgun were swiftly knocked into position and allow range defense in the saw itself close combat capabilities the device would become known as the Waymaker, the engineering masterpiece which humanity rapidly advancing technology would rely on for many years that's very cool and i did see your whole process this is one of the cool things about um about seeing the um the process of, of how people like make your stuff this is very very nice very nice i really like the story let me just write your name your name I, i'm gonna add you as as nat okay nat waymaker there we go so i think the story is a very cool story um again nothing like super super out of the ordinary but i did like the solution of how you came up with uh why the aliens were hidden this definitely looks like a construction tool so on the design i'm gonna give you very very high points because i really like the design of the of the whole thing execution wise i think it is a little bit low poly in certain areas i want to make a certain things a little bit uh like uh thicker and uh, it definitely looks like um like an old school weapon like from doom or something so yeah but everything else looks very nice and i like the the fact that this thing's like like rotate around like the whole like shotgun thing rotates around and it gets like stored on the underside of the gun so that you can make it a melee weapon and a and a and a um what's the word a melee weapon and a um a range weapon so yeah cool man I, I really like this congratulations okay let's go over here let's go back to our to where we were we were right here roma yeah we got roma roma this is nice man damn nice did you do the concept or did you find the concept because that's a really good sword or really good uh really good weapon or did you just like uh like uh meet journey and things like that Let's take a look at the story. It says, Once upon a time in a distant kingdom, there lived the king who was diligent and a wise ruler. Let me get the music back. There we go. He dreamed of peace and justice in his lands. In search of the embodiment of his ideals, he commissioned the creation of a special weapon, the Royal Revolver. This revolver was made of the rarest and most precious materials, decorated with gold and precious stones. It was small but powerful, capable of piercing any armor and defense. Each bullet of this revolver contained a piece of wisdom and sincere faith in the world. With his help, the king has justly and peacefully settled various conflicts in his country that require force and justice. The revolver became a symbol of his power and peacefulness. Centuries after his death, the royal revolver became a kind of shrine kept in the royal treasury. He reminded all future rulers of the need for peaceful resolution of conflicts and protection of their subjects. That's nice. That's nice. Again, simple story. Not, um, not overly ambitious i would say but it's uh it's nice i like the sword Th this definitely looks like some like ai generated concept which is fine it was allowed you could use ai to help yourself and the idea was to use that as a base and then modify it and i can see that you did modify i'm going to use this as a final render it looks really good man and i mean uh for those of you that don't know roma is um 
what's the word aroma has been uh, he's a really really amazing artist he's been with this community for a long time so he is experienced don't think that we're judging everyone at the same uh, level because we know what each one is uh capable of this one looks nice again the the base and the textures the render looks nice but i do think that the sign like the, uh, like on the technical level this is just like perfect it's great this could be in the game immediately but um on the on the design thing it doesn't feel again overly unique like i would like to see something that really 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 makes it unique this is something that feels very like bioshock infinite sort of thing it seems or it feels a little bit like red dead redemption or maybe some like space pirates sort of stuff So, if we're doing, like, if this was a king, right, one of the things that I would definitely need to see is the king's symbol. We need to see his symbol, his, like, sigil, like, something that says, maybe the name scribed here, like, uh, some Latin words saying, peace is necessary or something like that. Like, there's a lot of things that we could add to really make this a unique gun. Because right now, it's a perfectly well-executed element, but it just looks like, a, like, um, what's the word? Like a generic gun right like it's just a normal gun it's just a, a sci-fi steampunk kind of gun but it's a really good one really really good one i like this one congratulations roma now with a vibrance vibrance Okay, let's go at the story it says in a world ravaged by a zombie apocalypse maria stumbled upon an abandoned air fryer she ingeniously repurposed the machine turning it into both a defensive weapon and a survival tool the upper barrel shot fire and steam repelling zombies and creating barriers the lower barrel fired food providing hot meals maria and her group used this unique invention to shield themselves from the undead and to keep nourished the air fryer became a symbol of hope in dark times reminding everyone that creativity could be the key to survival that's great man that's great and uh, this is very cool because i could see this in like a funny zombie game um sort of like left for dead or things like that where it's just like very um you know very comical very goofy but very cool this is nice um from a technical perspective this looks really nice i love the dirt man this is really really cool on the on the dirt i think that looks very very nice but the render again the render has continuously been the weak point of a lot of submissions. And, and don't get me wrong, this is something that I see all the time, even in portfolio reviews, which, by the way, we're going to have our portfolio review next week. And unfortunately, render is one of those things that's not thought as much. And it's just a matter of doing a little bit of research. I'm, I'm, I'm probably I'm thinking, thinking about doing like a series on YouTube about that because it's very, very important um to have good render to really like showcase this assets in the best possible way another thing that would be great to see um and if you're here in the chat let me know my friend can you open the air fryer like did you model the thing so that you could actually see the inside of the air fryer because if you did that would be amazing like that's really really cool now i definitely imagine that the person holding the air fryer kind of like a like a front backpack or something otherwise it, it doesn't make too much sense but this is really good man really really fun i like it so congratulations on that one well, well done. Laser Rifle! Um, I don't have the name of the artist here either. Let's just write a Laser Rifle. There we go. Should we have another follower go? I think we should. Let's see. Oh. No? Oh. Sorry, I clipped something that I shouldn't. There we go. Let's end that goal and let's start a new one. Let's see if we get two goals in the session. It would be amazing. So if you're not following and you want to get us or help us get to our follower goal of 430, make sure to follow. Let's go. This is a laser rifle that was created by a former laser engineer, Kent, and his daughter, Easy, for protection. The southern government pressure on its citizens. Someone who controls the government took over all communications in the country and decided to send a warning message to its citizens. In one week, the nation will be reduced to gain more control and order over the masses. The experiment was to be conducted. That sounds like the perch. The experiment was to be conducted by the country's own army. The weapon has long been planned by Kent since he worked for the CIA and the army as a sapper. He was later kicked out of the CIA for practicing illegal weapons modifications with harmful materials and selling on the black market. Okay, so it seems, like, um, it seems like he was not a good guy. Um, Kent was not a good guy. This homemade laser is very effective. It has unlimited ammo, silent, and will go through any material like butter. Kent has a secret underground bunker that has his great grand that his great grandfather built and was passed on to his father. The underground bunker bunker is with a U. 
Just a quick note there. It's as big as two football fields and it's packed with limitless supplies to survive. Kent and Easy roam the country, fighting the army and saving lives, bringing survivors' family back to the bunker. Nice. Okay. So the story, it's cool. It's like this sort of like dystopian future where the government is against you. Kind of reminds me a little bit of like Hunger Games, you know, where where the the government controls everything, which is quite nice. Oh, that's your Nennikar. Okay, okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna write your name over here, man. Nennikar. There we go. So I like the story. I think it's uh, it's it's quite uh, it, it's nice. And having an anti-hero, like someone that's not completely good, but he's trying his best to do good, is is always good. Um, again, lasers and lens flares and stuff like that, not necessary. You don't need those to to push your design to make it um to make it uh, very nice. Texture wise, like this carbon fiber thing, it looks very weird. Like it's it's just too much noisy information. I would probably switch this around. And I would have this be yellow and maybe this thing right here, the thing that's red, be like this carbon fiber and maybe this red thing somewhere else. Like we need to be able to to differentiate between the different elements. Also, careful with the stocks. And um, and this is something that I've, uh, I've mentioned before. So if you're trying to do something, don't try to reinvent the wheel. It's, it's, it's stupid to try to reinvent the wheel. Look for what people have done and use that as an inspiration. So if you look at the stocks of any weapon or shotguns or rifles, anything, you're going to see that none of them are like a line, which is what you have right now. Like this thing right here, that would basically puncture your like clavicle or break your clavicle because the recoil, which again, I'm not sure why we would have recoil. Usually you have those to... to Either stabilize or to reduce recoil but if this is laser and you're not generating any any force towards you then there won't be any recoil right so the thing is that thing is way too thin so you either make it horse or vertical so that it like really rests and pushes on your on your shoulder or just remove it completely if it's a laser weapon you probably don't even need a stock to to stabilize or anything now as roma mentioned yes we have metal edgeware here everywhere and i do believe i have a video on youtube on how to do good metal edgeware so this was supposed to be a laser sword. Okay, so can you take the laser, like the sword out of this thing? That would be interesting, but then that goes into another issue, um, Neniker, which is too much, too much things happening, right? You you don't want to have... Um, you don't want to have something that's way, way too complicated because then you require a lot of people or a lot of explanation for people to understand. Uh, do we have any Mexican viewers right now? Because... In Mexico, there's this famous, uh, like, uh, art critique, Avelina Lesper. So she, she's got, like, a lot of memes and stuff. She's really, really, um, like, like, a really professional uh, art critique. And uh, she is super, super, super critical of the modern art movement. I'm not going to go into that debate right now. But she has a quote that I really like that says, If you have to explain your art to me, then your art is failing. Right. So the art has to be able to tell you what it is. You need to be able to even if it doesn't tell you, there should be enough information there to understand what's going on there. So in this case, there is not enough information for me to understand that this thing is a sword that you can take out and use in close combat, which, again, is a cool idea, but maybe not the best one for this particular project right now. OK. And again, render-wise, we need to improve the renders. I'm definitely going to do a series next week about how to do better renders because uh, this is something that we need. I might ask some of you to lend me your, um, your projects here to use them as demos on how we can take what you have and make it better. So, yeah, that's it, man. Thanks for your, for your submission. Let's go to this one. Heretics End. This one's very, very cool. Very edgy. Again, um, like two skulls on both sides with like a like rib cage and stuff. Is this what like a shotgun as well? Kind of looks like the Buster Sword with uh, with something attached to it. Uh, I think it should be plausible or believable, and that often includes uh, practical. Yes, yes, of course. Uh, Elder Fries, it says, I do not join the competition, but I am learning a lot. And that's the point. That, that, that's one of the reasons. This is a question that I get frequently. It's like, ah, should I go to school? Should I go to university? A lot of the things that you learn from the school or from the universities is not what your teacher, like the teachers are, are teaching. It's more about the feedback that you are getting and the feedback that your like peers are getting you because you learn a lot from the successes and the mistakes of other people as well. So that's why this sort of stuff is very important. Sean says, I can give you any of my pieces you need then. The wagon. Yeah, yeah, we're definitely going to be using some. I want to use some community assets so that I can show you how we can take something that you guys made and make it better with very, very simple things. 
says a, nad a nightmarish amalgamation of demonic flesh and human firearm technology created in the hellfire forges of the seventh circle painstakingly stitched together with the bone and meat of several fallen demons and enchanted with spells so dark and vile even the denizens of hell think twice before taking hold of it i think i need like a deeper voice for this one let's go let's go <laughs> the massive half blade half double barrel shotgun was made by demons with the sole purpose of killing other demons with a design that ensures only those of strong will and strong minds can wield it only someone of almost superhuman strength can handle the weapons as even the kickback can send a decent sized man flying and only someone of a strong mind and will can wield it as holding the blade increases the user's aggression tenfold sending them into a blind fury there you go <laughs> so yeah that's a very cool story man i get a little bit edgy and we're going into the extreme remember the tears of play that i was like talking about this is definitely going um a little bit higher into the into the epic sort of levels i always like to keep a balance because again so once you go that high there's nothing else you can uh like um like go from there uh, are you guys fans of uh, dragon ball c i feel like dragon ball c suffers from that where every season is just like a more incredible and amazing thing and my brother and i we have a a, a joke where we say goku always wins just by screaming stronger and going into the next level which is ridiculous right so there's no real stakes because you know goku is gonna win at the end so so that's the problem with going super super high there's you, you don't feel like there's any any tense tenseful what's the word yeah any stress or anything things are just gonna solve themselves so <laughs> no, no, i'll keep that to my i'll keep the voice acting to my dnd games only for now at least so let's go here this is uh, kevin and the story again it's a good story again a little bit cliche with the with the devils and everything but i like it technical wise this definitely needs a little bit more work the textures look very fake especially the blood just look like um, like overlays of the splatter remember that it's very important if you're using substance painter to always use blending modes so in this case the um, the uh, overlay or the um multiply all of these guys they will multiply the colors and it will look like the blood is actually infusing the metal also the render is a very flat render super super flat and this is the kind of renders that kill everything that we do if you have a flat render even if you have the most amazing model you're not going to be able to really get that nice image out of the whole thing so it's very very important to always again every time you have metal you need to have an environment either you model the whole environment and you have an actual real environment or use an hdri that has the environment in the image so that it projects into the metal and you get true reflections because so otherwise it's just going to look very very flat it's gonna look like a playstation one like acid uh bag boy says the goku in the anime damn don't die i want to become stronger by training against you goku in the movies start praying yeah right <laughs> I, I was never a, a, a um see that's why i i was never a dragon ball c fan i i saw it or watched some of it of course but i loved the um saint seiya Did you guys see that one so saint seiya in mexico we call it the zodiac knights but the the original name is saint seiya and uh, i love this one because they get their shit kicked like you would see them dying bloody like it was just amazing to see them lose really 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 bad and then somehow find the strength to to come back and win right so it was it was a really really cool anime that one Okay, cool. That was Heretic's End. Let's now go with Sonat di Hurdigurdi by Molko. Second. There we go. So Molko says, Once upon a time, in the not-so-distant future, the Earth, following too many wars, finds itself in a medieval post-apocalyptic period. Interesting! Galbur is a very well-known bard with Sonata, his Hurdigurdi. He travels the world to cover his songs, but Galdur is also known to be a famous bounty hunter. Sonata transforms into a powerful Gatling gun that spits 5.56 bullets. A barrel comes out from the front of the instrument, the bullets are ejected from above, and everything is operated using the crank at the back. Dude, this is freaking amazing. This is so cool, man. So cool. It's very, very nice. I love this. Yeah, this is great. The story, amazing. It's a really, really, really good story. I really like it. Design, this looks really good as well. Now, some people are saying here that this is an actual, um, an actual instrument. It's called a sonata. Let's see. Instrument. 
Mm, that's like a violin, but it's not a violin, right? Or what's the name of that thing? Kurdi Gurdi? Is that the... Kurdi Gurdi. Yeah, there you go. Kurdi Gurdi. Nice. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, you managed to build one of this, which is great. So, I love this. The only thing I would like you to do, my friend, because this is an amazing... It could even be, like... It, it, I would definitely make this in my portfolio piece if this was my asset. You need to add a little bit more resolution. It's very low poly right here. I'm not sure what your current uh, poly count is, but like go a little bit higher just so that you can really really have this thing looking a little bit nicer uh careful with the wood grain i'm not sure if the wood grain should be going in this direction we will need to see some uh, references but i would expect that direction to be the opposite direction so yeah you can see that these ones are going in the long direction so just just check that and make sure that you're going on the on the proper direction if you need to um this is cool i love this i love the i would <clears throat> I'm not sure if I would switch the barrel this thing on the other side and keep the but the cranks on that side, right? So then it, it doesn't make any sense because it, it's a little bit hidden the barrel from a, from a design point of view. But that's really cool, man. Rendering wise, I'm not sure what you used to render. Careful with these gray areas right here. Just add an infinite background or like a wall. Make sure that when you place the light, it, it's only like a spotlight on the element so that all of this becomes dark because it can be a little bit distracting on the on the composition. But this is very very nice, man. Congratulations. You, you really you really created a weapon of legend that is very unique, which is very, very nice. Very nice, Molko. Love it. Okay, cool. Let's go now with Exerun, the Lava Walker. Okay, this is the last one. This is the render. Nice concept, very fantasy-like, again, um, kind of like World of Warcraft. Uh, usually, these guard pieces, this is very important. Again, form follows function, and there's a reason why swords are made in a specific way. Usually, usually the handguards are going to be pointing the opposite direction, because they're going to be catching a blade that slides through the blade, so it should protect your hand. In this case, there is a little bit of protection due to this thing right here, but this is very dangerous, because if they push the sword towards you, you might stab yourself. So, no, 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 that's not the last one. No, no, we're missing some. No, we're missing, like, a lot. <laughs> no, yeah, we, we still got a, a, a while to go, my friends. We still got a ways to go. So, I, I like the, the idea. Let's take a look at the story. It says, Once in a realm of fire and molten rock, there existed a legendary sword known as Lava Walker. This remarkable weapon possessed a power unlike any other in the world, for it could consume not only the flames, but even the scorching lava that flowed through the Thresher's landscape. The tale of Lava Walker beginning the heart of the Fireforged Mountains, where it was said that the sword was forged by a known, known blacksmith. He toiled tirelessly using the rarest of materials found deep within the Earth's core to craft this extraordinary weapon. The hill was adorned with a legendary ruby, and the blade seemed to shimmer with an inner fire. As the sword was completed, the blacksmith realized its unique potential. In a daring experiment, he thrust Lava Walker into a roaring volcanic eruption, and to the astonishment of all who witnessed it, the sword absorbed the molten lava, cooling it instantly into a fearsome blade. This marked the beginning of Lava Walker's incredible legacy. The one who wields this weapon will not just be incredibly strong, but will possess immunity to any kind of heat. That's really cool, but we missed a very, very important part here on the design. The story I like, I think that's a, that's a cool story, it's a relatively unique. But one of the things that I don't recommend, or that I don't like, is that we don't see fire. I don't see the lava. Where is the lava? We need to see, if this is supposed to be Lava Walker, we need to see fire everywhere. Um, David, let's see if we can link the... the um, the link to the to the blender course because on that one that's also a lava axe and i go through the whole process of showing you how to make that sort of like lava material and render it inside of blender so that you could make this thing look even better i think that's the only thing that we're missing under the sign we're missing that sort of like lava effect and again render very simple render very flat render we're not seeing cool reflections this is where you can just get an hdri from a volcano or from like a mountain so that the reflection of that mountain of those colors are here on the plate as well but good job, man. Good job on this uh, Lava Walker sword. Now we got Ryuji, on, Ryuji no Ken from Wabis. Oh, wait. That one was X Run, and this is Wabis. So, Wabi says, the legendary katana known as Ryuji no Ken had the classic and elegant appearance of a traditional Japanese katana. Crafted by a master swordsmith, its blade was made from the finest Tamahagane steel, featuring a sharp edge and a graceful curve. 
The hilt wrapping traditional silk cord bore a simple design. After revered samurai Akira Takahashi's climatic battle against a tyrannical warlord, warlord the Ryujin no Ken was left resting on his tombstone for several years. It stood as a solemn testament to his valor, or valor and unwavering dedication to justice. The villagers, deeply reverent of their fallen hero, frequently visited his tomb to pay their respects. Many left offerings and said prayers at the grave. The sword on the tombstone became a symbol of their gratitude for Akira's unwavering protection and a source of inspiration for generations to come. Over the years, the elements gently weathered the sword. The Ryuji no Ken remained on the tombstone, silently guarding Akira's memory and the village he had saved. A reminder of the legendary samurai's legacy that continued to resonate through the passing seasons. That's very traditional Japanese like folklore story. That's cool. Um, however, this is something that I recently learned, and I learned it from Guillermo del Toro. He was giving a conference. I'm not sure where, but the TikTok is just like floating around. And um, he was he was talking about the he was talking about how scripts which relate to the story are very important because when you write something on the script or on the storyboard and stuff like that, you need to show it on the camera. You need to write something that's going to be shown on the camera. So in this particular case, you mentioned that this has a sharp edge and a graceful, graceful curve, but due to the fact that the sword is inside of the, of the, like, um, um, cover right here we're not really seeing it also again rendering we need more contrast a little bit more more light because right now it's very flat it looks like a misty or cloudy day and there's no no contrast whatsoever so bu -bu 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 -bu, that's right yeah don't worry even if you if you don't know or if you're not learning blender man the information it's it's like because that's the that's the substance uh painter information that you might want i think that's chapter six or seven where we go over substance painter and that's where i do the lava thing so, so I guess you could do that as well. Okay, cool. So that was a wabbies right there. Let's now go with uh, this Royal Capesh. Oh, my friend, dude, you did not add a story. I'm not. I mean, I'm not gonna disqualify you or anything, but you're not gonna be able to compete because you missed one of the important parts, which was the story. I'm gonna see if you forgot to or placed it somewhere else, but it doesn't seem like it. So. Yeah, I mean, this is a nice sword. I like the scare right there. It's an Egyptian sword. Again, rendering wise, we need to um, we need to improve the render. But this is a, a good stuff. But Dave, this is a just like the map render post recent renders in the wave. Wasn't able to finish on time just in case. Oh, OK, OK. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take a look. Let's see. Oh, there you go. Yeah, that's much better. Nice, nice. Yeah, it's a shame that you couldn't finish on time, man. And uh, I'm sorry, I would love to to allow everyone to participate. But unfortunately, we need to be fair. And uh, we gave enough time to, to everyone. But don't worry, we're going to have uh, something uh, for the next contest as well. Or, or you, you will be able to participate on the next contest. This is, look, it's good. Again, one of the things that I would change is the background. You don't need that Egyptian sort of like hieroglyph background because it detracts from everything else. I really like the coin, like the pommel and the, and the blade, but it looks very flat. The metal of the blade looks very flat. So we need to improve the, the sort of like a metal effect. If we look for like a gold blade, you're going to see that it actually has a little bit more, look at that. Like a little bit more noise, like a little bit of variation on the roughness. So so we can play with different things to make the blade not just like perfectly, perfectly flat, like a CG render. We wanted to make it we want to make it a little bit more interesting. And that's all uh texturing. It's only the texturing side of things. The time of the great pharaohs nestled um in the heart of ancient Egypt, there lived the legendary hero named Memphis. His valor and wisdom were celebrated far and wide as he led his people to prosperity and defend the land against invaders. On the faithful day, the pharaoh, in the gesture of thanks for sending gratitude, gifted Memphis a royal capesh, a weapon forged with divine craftsmanship, a blade said to have been touched by the gods themselves. This capesh was unlike any others, adorned with precious gems and intricate engravings. Again, if you're saying that it has precious gems and intricate engravings, it should be on the render, okay? Don't mention something that's not there, because people are gonna wonder, where are the gems? Where are the engravings, okay? Cool. Dilto, I also said uh, saw that you didn't finish in time. Oh, this was a good one, man. It's really cool. It reminds me a little bit of the on the Thundercats uh, sword, but it looks good. It looks good, this looks good. Next time, guys, next time. We're gonna do more contests, don't worry. Okay, so that one was the blade right there. Ravinish Shadow. Oh, that one that was the one that we didn't finish. Ravinish Shadow. Almost there, man. Almost there. I'll take a look a little bit later, okay? So that we can go through all of these guys because we still got a bunch to go. 
Yep, yep. That's that's definitely something that we can do per depth. Like just take it in substance and, and give it some um some more details as well. Let's see. Uh, the story begins in a time when an evil force known as the Rahu had cast a long and malevolent shadow over the land of Luminara. This malignant power had plunged the once glorious kingdom into an age of darkness, fear, and despair. In the heart of Luminara, a young blacksmith named Indrayu sensed the kingdom's suffering. She was no ordinary blacksmith, but a skilled artisan with an innate connection to the elemental forces of light. Her fairy red hair and determined spirit earned her the nickname the Flame Forger. Nice. One fateful night, as Indrayu told in her forge, a shimmering light manifested before her. It coalesced into a radiant ethereal blade, its hilt adorned with glowing crystals that pulsed with the pure essence of light. The weapon of light had chosen her as its guardian. Intrigued and awestruck, Indrayu, Indrayu accepted the weapon, feeling its immense power coursing through her. She knew her destiny was to wield it against a Rahu. Okay, let me take a look at the weapon. I, I need to speed things up just a little bit, because otherwise we're not going to be able to finish. And I got a, <laughs> I got a meeting at, in, in like one hour, so let's see this. This, is, this looks good. I really like the story, and um, the thing that you mentioned about the female blacksmith, I think that's quite original, slightly original, so that's really, really nice. So, I, I like the, the presentation, it's a little bit better as well. I know that these thunders are uh, post-production. You're going to add them. I did. Oh, no, you did add them on the reflection. That's great. Yeah, this is good. I think design-wise, because here on the on the story, you mentioned that she created a blade. Right around here, you said that... Um, here, quality to run an ethereal blade. You say blade right there, and then it seems like she... Um, she changed that blade into something else because this looks more like chakrams or something like that. So again, be careful on what we write because depending on what we write is what people are gonna expect on our elements. And if the and if the elements that we wrote are not there, then it might be a little bit difficult to to find like the the exact element. Totome, legendary try of action. This looks very fun. This is like a, like a nice cartoonish uh, again sort of like stylized uh, axe. I like it. The annals of history, there exists a barren axe, once the prized possession of a chieftain among the ancient Maya tribe, okay, whose reverence for deities that traverse the celestial realms above their heads was paramount. Deceptively simplistic in its appearance, this artifact concealed an untamed and formidable power, one that would manifest only in the direst of moments, thus establishing their dominion over the intricate ecosystem they inhabited. It was only the genuine chosen one, the anointed custodian of the celestial emissaries, who possessed the means to harness their capricious force, thereby attaining mastery over the enigmatic axe. The axe head, the crowning jewel of the enigmatic weapon, bears the hallmark of a civilization steeped in reverence for both the terrestrial and the celestial. Its razor edge of visage glistens with a lustrous fusion of obsidian and jade, materials chosen with a meticulous eye for the spiritual significance. This fusion, as stark as the opposite of light and shadow, it's a testament to the mountain understanding of balance and duality. Yeah, this is very cool. I'm not sure where the obsidian is. Obsidian is very glossy, so I would probably, again, maybe one side obsidian, one side uh, jade. That will be interesting. But this looks very, very cool, man. I like the design. Again, it's simple. It's a simple design. It's not overly complicated. Very, like, simple primitives on, like, the eyes and the eyebrows and things like that. But it works. Like, for a game, for a stylized game, this would definitely, definitely work. This is by MySeek. Very good. Render-wise, I like the render. I do feel like it's a little bit dark. I think we went a little bit too much into the contrast. So I would just like tone it down a little bit. And maybe this totem may move it to the side and make it smaller. So that it doesn't compete against the axe. Like you don't want people to be looking at something that's not your weapon or your main piece in this case. Let me just answer one very quick message. And I'll be right back. Uh, 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 um. There we go. Dragon blood. If diamonds were a girl's best friend, the halberd is like the emperor's partner. Chinese people believe that halberd is a symbol of stability, spirit, and purity, long life, and immortality. This is Safui. This halberd was called the Dragon Blood. It has a legend told throughout, throughout the kingdom that it was a sword that had been forged on the day of the dragon's blood flow. On the day the dragon's blood flowed across the sky and dripped down to coat this halberd at the perfect time with the final strike of the smith. 
This halberd is not meant to serve anyone, but one must have a strong, courageous, and pure mind and spirit. This halberd was engraved with dragon scale patterns and was adorned with an elegant dragon head and a blade with a pattern engraved like the breath of a dragon. Yeah, this looks very nice. Very cool. Um, from a from a story perspective, I like the story. From a design perspective, I understand the things. It's definitely like chunky. So this reminds me a little bit more like the again World of Warcraft weapons, League of Legends weapons, where they're a little bit bigger than life, so that you can see them and they look cool. However, I do feel like we're missing some sharp edges on the technical side of things. So the the blade itself, for instance, it looks a little bit like um, like clay. You can see it right here on this side. It doesn't look like metal. It just looks like a, like inflated. I don't know if that makes sense. Same for the dragon, it looks very, very puffy. So usually this sort of weapons, they have very sharp angles, very intense crevices, things that really create the marks that we need to make sure that we get a nice um, a nice result. So the, I like the fact that you went for the whole cave. I would probably open up the shot a little bit more. So this huge pillar that we have right here is occupying at least like one third of the image. That's a little bit too much, I would say. So I would push it a little bit more to the side and I would probably use more depth of field so that we lose more of the background and we can see the weapon a little bit more clearer. But you don't need to add all of this. And this is a, a, a lesson that I learned the hard way when I was uh, at school because I tried to do this sort of stuff. And my teacher back in the day, he told me, if you don't, if you're not an environment artist, don't do environments. Simple as that. If you're not a character artist, don't do characters. If you're not a prop uh, like artist, don't do props. Because if you do something that you're not good at, then what's going to happen is that that thing is going to bring down everything else that you are good at. So... In my case, I was a character artist. I was doing this like Frost Giants, one of my portfolio pieces. And um, and I was doing like an environment for him, like pines and mountains and things like that. And it looked like shit. So my teacher was like, no, the character looks very cool, but the environment's killing it. So just get rid of the environment, do a clean render. And then later on, when you work in the studio, someone else is going to do the environment. You're going to do the character. And together, you both are going to create an amazing shot. So no need to do something that you're not uh, expert at or, or um, proficient at if that's gonna bring down the other element. Yeah, and as Roma says right there, a little bit more light on, on the front, like another rim light on this area right here might be a good idea as well. Maybe make the eye glow something just to bring the focus back there. There is no point on doing cinematic lights. Um, it depends on the on the on the process, but yeah, the unless you're doing like the full shot, like you're gonna make sure that you're doing the full, full, full shot, then a just a clean render is usually gonna be more than enough. Let me let me show you what I mean. I I've shown this guy before, Alessandro Baldassaroni, huge fan of his, and uh, and he has some really cool characters with like backgrounds. But you're gonna see that a lot of backgrounds are very very simple. Uh, they changed the whole thing here. Oh wait, I want I want to see the art station. There we go. So for instance, look at this, right? He did this amazing golem for Riot Games for like a cinematic or something, probably. And as you can see, he's presenting it with just a great background, but with good light. Compared to the other swords that we've seen so far, this one, even though it has a great background, I'm not against the great backgrounds, I'm against bad light. This has good, clean light. Another wide one right here, a couple of extra shots, the clay render, the high poly. And then he shows the, um, what's the word? He shows the shots that this thing is on, on the, on the cinematic film that the whole team work on here's another one like very simple character no need for fancy backgrounds we don't need to add like an office or anything it's just a character and then later on there might be a shot where you see the the character inside of the of the of the shot so you can see look at this most of his stuff is just a character on a clean background he does have some of these illustrations but most of this are just like fanners that he's done i, I think so yeah just keep that in mind because it's a, it's a very important thing to note like don't overcomplicate things if you don't need to overcomplicate things let's now go with juvra sanji juvra has been working very 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 like diligently throughout this month he's been sharing a lot of works in progress which is amazing to see let's take a look at the story centuries ago in a village of unwavering strength bravery and clear heart a fearsome terrorized a fearsome beast terrorized the jungle on the outskirts devouring hundreds of animals and villagers with no choices left the men decided to take down the beast a worthy weapon was required a weapon so strong which could cut through the thick skin and can pierce straight through the heart in the jungle, inky, inky blackness they confronted. In the jungle, inky blackness they confronted the beast. Though they prevailed, most of them perished. 
believed that the souls of those brave men who got fused with the spear, a symbol of their sacrifice, it remained forever bound to the jungle, where courage and unity conquered the fiercest of darkness. Nice! Here's the concept piece, like the, the concept art, the idea. And then a lot of updates. Let's go for the final render. And there, there you go. And look here, um, my friend here is a great example of why showing progress is a good idea. He's been working on this for, again, for the past month. And he's been showing a lot of uh, whips on the Discord. And people have been helping. There's nothing wrong with getting help. Some people are scared that if they show their work, they're going to get, I don't know, like beaten or something because someone else is going to see and copy them and do something better. It, it usually doesn't happen that way in real life. So... Art can be a very, very collaborative endeavor, and that allows us to generate things that we couldn't do by ourselves. So asking for feedback, asking to see what people think is always a good way to, to find those areas, those opportunity areas that can make our stuff look even better. So this is good, man. I really like the story. I really like the design, and I think the execution is really good as well. So congratulations, man. This looks very, very nice. This is a, I would even say this is a good portfolio piece. There's a couple of things that would change or, or, or improve. For instance, this leather wraps right here look a little bit um, like clay. They don't look like this ones look a lot better. So if this ones could use another maybe pass. But even this render, this is nice. Just a little bit more light. I would I usually like a little bit more contrast, but that's just personal preference. This is really, really good. Congratulations there. Juvra. There we go. So that was Juvra. Let's now go with a T. Do we have a name? No, we don't. Deep within the mysterious woods lay an extraordinary weapon unlike any other. It is said that it has made not of a precious metal snore through fire, but rather created from a simple leaf. At first glance, the leaf appears to be just an ordinary part of nature, but possesses remarkable powers. Legends have spoke of the leaf's unimaginable strength and extraordinary abilities. Obtaining it meant invisibility, as every strike would match the force of a thousand storms. That's very cool. Nice process right there. Um, I do think that on the execution level, the story is cool. I like the story. Let's call this Nature's Edge. I like the story. I do think that the execution is a little bit simple, uh, especially for instance here on these things right here. I know that these are tourists. So if they're going to be simple tourists, we could spend a couple of extra edge loops just to make them a little bit uh, sharper so they look a little bit nicer. I like this sort of like hand painted approach that you went for, but I do feel like it looks very simple in regards again to to technical uh to technical stuff design wise i would probably have polished this or add a little bit less roughness so i did look a little bit sharper uh but other than that this is a a good uh, a good element man i like it good job on the on the nature's edge we've already seen the Waymaker. now let's go with the blood forge blade First things first, very dark. This is a very dark render, man. I, I see what you're doing. This is a spine. This is the, the rib cage, And then we have the sword. That's very cool. Again, very like Bloodborne, Dark Souls sort of stuff, uh, which is fine. But this is very dark. It's, it's being very difficult for me to, to actually see what's going on there. Let me see if I can just like expose this a little bit more. There you go. See? Look at that. Look at all of the amazing details that are just hidden behind all of that element. So this, this is what you what you delivered. This is like the, the darkness that you delivered. This is the sort of stuff that I would recommend for, for the element. Of course, I'm I'm going to like give you some pointers here, but this is what you should have submitted for this thing. I really like the, the eyes and all of this like a, like a gory details. I think it looks very, very cool, very fun. But presentation wise, we need to improve that because otherwise... It's very difficult for people to to see um to see <laughs> in general just to see did you guys have that issue with um what movie was it there was a movie not too long ago the the the, the, the batman movie right with robert pattinson was that the one it was very dark and not dark in the, like it was a deep movie it was very dark like you couldn't see anything it was very 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 contrasty so so we gotta be very careful there i know that we tend to do that to give the this sort of like mysterious sort of like thing but in this particular case it, it's not really helping us can you do post process of your rendering blender composition tab or is photoshop yeah you can do it in composition in, in, in blender that's fine you can do it in, in either if it's just an image i would usually do it in, in photoshop to be honest because i have i have more experience with it and a little bit more control but if it's an animation or something then you can do it inside of blender in the realm, realm shrouded in darkness and despair, there exists a legendary villainous sword known as the Bloodforged Blade. Its creation is steeped in sinister mysticism and cruelty. 
According to the darkest of legends, this malevolent weapon was forged from a combination of human remains in a rare cursed ore found deep within the bowels of the earth. The story tells of a malevolent sorcerer who sought ultimate power and was willing to pay any price to obtain it. He began by gathering the bones of fallen heroes, capturing their lost souls to fill his dark ambition. Again, you're talking about souls. We need to see souls. We need to see some emissive, some runes, something, because otherwise I wouldn't know that there are souls in there. To further enhance the blade's wickedness, he mined a rare ore tainted by the very essence of the underworld. With forbidden riddles and profound incantations, the sorcerer melted these macabre ingredients into a sword of unparalleled malevolence. The bloodforged blade was said to be capable of draining, draining the life of those it struck, adding their essence to the dark amalgamation within. However, the sword's power came at a terrible cost. Any who dared to wield it became slaves to its insidious influence, driven to commit heinous acts and perpetrate evil deeds. The sword's hunger for souls was insatiable, leading its wielders down a path of madness and malevolence. Legends speak of a valiant hero who, is a great, with great personal sacrifice, managed to wrest the bloodforged blade from the clutches of a wicked tyrant. The hero buried the sword deep within the desolate and cursed tomb, hoping to imprison its malevolent spirit forever. But as the legend goes, the bloodforged blade's dark aura continues to seep from the tomb, beckoning to those who crave power at any cost. It is said that the sword's curse endures, tempting the hearts of the wicked to seek it out and perpetuate its malefic reign of terror upon the world. Nice! I like the story. That's a really cool story. So, the bloodforged... It's a cool story. Design, I like the design actually. I think it's a, it's a cool design, but presentation, man. You really need to up the game there because you have a really nice asset. Like it's it's well constructed on the technical side of things, but it's too dark. It's way 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 too dark. Let's now go with a Mert. Mert, a good supporter here of the channel with the Cherry Gale fan. Oh, this is very pretty, very simple. I would say it's a little bit of a simple design. I don't see like super fancy things from a design point of view. But the presentation is really nice, really pretty, really clean. This pastel colors, I know what I'm looking at. There's no question about it, so I like that. Let's take a look at the story. And it says, The Cherry Gale Fan, a modern marble of craftsmanship and deadly precision, is a cherished and carefully guarded secret with the Xing Wei Empire. Hopefully I pronounced that right. The fans were crafted by a renowned artisan named Master Lin for praising Xiao Hu Ying. Instead of a single fan, Master and crafted a pair, each concealing sharp blades. These fans were designed to be wielded together, connected by a chain. This innovative design allowed for seamless and coordinated combat, offering both defense and offense in equal measure. What made the Cherry Gale fan even more exceptional was its versatility. While the chain allowed for coordinated attacks and versatile maneuvers, each fan could be used independently without losing its deadly effectiveness. In the hands of Princess Xiao Hu Ying, they became the instrument of precision and grace. Uh, it says Princess Xiao Hu Ying was not only a princess, but also a secret hero of the Empire, operating as a skilled assassin. She carried the Cherry Gale Fan with her daily, with her daily, using it as a concealed weapon that wouldn't attract attention. To the casual observer, it appeared as if, he, if she carried a pair of exquisite fans, gracefully moving them to create a gentle breeze during her public appearances. Little did they know that behind this facade, a facade, facade is a, it's a facade, right? Facade laid a deadly secret, a hidden weapon of unparalleled precision and lethality. In her hands, the pair of cherry gale fans would dance with little grace. Concealed behind the gentle breeze they seemed to create, the deadly blaze represented not only her resolve, but the unity of beauty. See, one thing I would probably add to this thing is I would make the chain magical. Because if she's going to be out there on the open, just like bringing them with her as a sort of like protection, and you have a chain going between them, that would be very weird. But if it's a magical chain, and I mean, we can use that since we're doing sort of like fantasy things. Um, I think it could be like just like an energy chain, right? Like it could be made of the same links, but just make them emissive so that when she needs the chain, she activates it. And then if she needs them separated, the chain just disappears. So that could give her even more versatility and, uh, and add to the whole thing. Another thing I would definitely add to this thing is something that made this fans her like if we have a name maybe her name is written over here or maybe her her nickname like i don't know the lethal flower or something like that because right now we just have this like nice pattern of this like a cherry blossom but it would be nice to have something else that again if we don't have the story could tell a story there is actually oh there is right there's there it's it's very small though so i would add something over here probably in my opinion that that that's what i would probably just um 
um, add to this thing to, to make it a little bit more interesting. Because otherwise, you depend too much on the princess to, like, carry the weapon. If it, if this if you just find this weapon and you don't know anything about it, it looks cool, it, it could be very efficient, but there's nothing else that really tells you, oh, this is, like, an, a, a weapon of, of legend, like an epic super weapon. But I like the story. The story is very, very cool, Mert. Congratulations there. Yeah, like the nebulous chain of Saint Seiya, uh, uh, Molkov. That's exactly right. Eren! Aaron Jagger. Okay, I'm not sure if... I don't think your name is going to be Aaron Jagger, but... Oh, that's very small, man. I don't think I'm going to be able to read that. Careful with this. You always want to double check whenever you're... Like, submitting something. You always want to double check that you make it easier for whoever it is that they're uh, going to be able to, to read it. Once upon a time, there were two cities, the upper city and the lower city coexisting side by side. The residents of the upper city, however, often looked down upon their counterparts in the lower city, even discarding their leftovers without a second thought. Among the noble figures in the lower city, some individuals grew increasingly disturbed by this unjust situation and resolved to unite. Led by Shorty George, a man whose nickname aptly describes his diminutive stature, but believed his daredevil spirit, they embarked on a mission to enact change. Shortly initiated an operation and crafted a formidable weapon for their cause. This weapon crashed Chanel. Chanel or Channel? <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm gonna call it Channel because Chanel sounds weird. Took the form of, substantial, of, a, of, the, of a substantial hammer, specifically designed to deliver powerful blows thanks to the propulsion generated by its central engine. Okay? So, designed for a small individual, the weapon was nothing short of a mighty firearm. Incorporated into the weapon's handle was the power unit typically found in motorcycles, which filled the engine. Additionally, it featured air thrust ducts on the gun's front to lift it back into position after each strike. As a result, Shorty George will incredible pawn tool for his mission. The name channel was derived from this channels. Okay, channel. Okay. With no remaining barriers to victory in this path, Shorty George successfully negotiated an agreement with his triumph in the war. This agreement allowed him and his people to live on equal terms in both cities. It was a testament of the power of the human spirit, symbolized by channel, which became the instrument that forged equality between the upper and lower cities. Nice. I like it. I like the story. It sounds very like... Um, there was a movie called West Side Story, I think? Um, the weapon, though, seems a little bit simplistic, like, it, it, it could be a little bit difficult to wield due to this, like, angle that it has. I would probably would have gone for a straight edge instead of this sort of, like, bend, because, again, it might be a little bit weird to, to wield. And we definitely need to see the exhaust. I know you mentioned some exhaust, so I would definitely like to see some of that elements over here to, to imply what you mentioned on the story of how this thing just, like, bounces back into the, um, into the... Um, to the character who's wielding it. I like the composition. Again, I would probably remove the background. And the reason why this background is not working is because it has a very similar design pattern as other elements or as the elements of the hammer. So it confuses you, right? Like, I'm not sure if these things are part of the hammer or, or what. I know that you thought about this as part of the environment of the hammer, which is fine. But again, from a presentation perspective, we definitely need to see something a little bit more like neutral so that we don't get confused with the background. The texture maps look very, very good. I really like the, the variation in roughness, the emissives. Again, it's a simple construction from a technical side of things, but it's a, it's a cool one. Okay, so that was Eren right there. Let's go with this one, Inquisitor's Revenge. This religious chain maze was made from the mummified hand of Tomas de Torquemada, the most infamous Inquisitor known for his brutality against sinners. He was often nicknamed the Hammer of Heretics. This is not a good guy's weapon since his origin and purpose is merely punishment and hatred. The frame is made out of gold and brass, including... In his design, four amethysts among four holy Marys. The handle is constituted of marble with a golden pommel having a steel spike on the end of it. The mummified hand which holds the halo that connects the chains is attached to the frame using four nails, keeping it solid and tight. Talking about the two crosses, they're made of steel with golden details, including 12 rings each. These rings represent the 12 disciples of Jesus and also surround the white thorns. The purple glow is believed to be Thomas's darkness impregnating the crosses and those who wield it. I imagine this weapon should cause some type of poisoning or bleeding damage with its thorns, since it's a punishment for the heretics. This looks very crazy, man. This one's very, very nice. I, I think I'm going to give you the, the full points and story, because it's very original to, to have the, what's the word, the hand of a, of a saint or martyr or like a 
uh, an inquisitor as part of the weapon that's like a cursed weapon in its own from presentation um i i think presentation we're just missing a little bit of variation on the materials and this is very common you can see that the gold right now is perfectly like shiny same for the marble there's usually always going to be a little bit of roughness in those elements also it becomes a little bit dark on this side so i would add just a little bit more light on this side too to make it like punch a little bit more but the design that's a really good design man like like the whole story the the 12 points representing the di disciples the halos like all of the things that you thought about that's what we were talking about like on your story you're mentioning all of these details and these details are present on the actual weapon so everything makes sense that's that's what we're looking for we're looking for a story that's cohesive with the result that we're looking at so this is really good man congratulations on the inquisitor's revenge let's go with fizzy adventure there we go, this is a little bit more cartoony. Once upon a time, there was a little boy named Max on the outskirts of the city. Max was a child who loved to invent. One day, he saw a commercial on television, make your own toy weapon with cola and Mentos. Max was thrilled by this idea and he immediately got to work. Max's mother brought a bottle of cola and a few packs of Mentos. Max rushed to the garden and began experimenting. He puts a bottle of cola and a few Mentos into a plastic bottle after tightly sealing the cap. He stepped back like magic, the plastic bottle quickly soared into the air and colorful foam scattered around. Max locked this event and decided to make a good toy weapon. To do this, he started consuming cola and mentos. His garden had now turned into a cola mentos paradise. His friends came and shared in this fun experience. Max decided to organize toy weapon competitions using mentos and cola, and bets were placed on whose toy would be better. Everyone tried to find the best cola and mentos combination. Max developed a secret formula and prepared for the grand finale. On the day of the competition, the garden was filled with colorful foam. Max eventually won the first prize with the toy weapon he made. Everyone had a great time, and they celebrated Max's created abilities. Cola and Mentos had brought fun and adventure into Max and his friend's life. The story tells the tales of Max's adventures filled with a fun toy he created using Cola and Mentos. Here is the winning weapon. Ta -da! Not bad! I like it! It's a simple design. Um, I can definitely see the the basic construction. There's a couple of technical issues, and the story is great, by the way. I love the story. However, here on the model, we could have added a couple of more like round edges in certain areas. And again, be very careful with the metal edge wear. Now, from a, from a design perspective, this actually is quite well designed. I believe this is like the like the um, silicone guns that we use to like fix homes and things like that. It, it is very cute. This is something that I could see on a like a Pixar movie, Disney movie, stuff like that. Uh, but we need to increase our resolution on some of the assets because this does look a very, very low poly. But uh, yeah, congratulations, man. This is this is quite nice. Quite, quite nice. This is going to be Fissy Adventure. Let's go with Avon Bane Phantom. You're up, man. Yeah, Pau Vargas. I agree. It's, it's very creative. Looks very nice. And here we go. Let's go with this one. Oh, that's a long story. <laughs> Phantom, let's go. Uh, don't worry, man. No, 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 I'm crying. They're crying. Let's, let's see what you got. In the shadow realms of a world ravaged by war and darkness, a malevolent blade known as the Even Bane was conceived in the darkest depths of the underworld. Its creation was a macabre collaboration between a fallen demon lord and a blacksmith of unparalleled malevolence. Centuries ago, the underworld seeded with chaos. Uh, I'm gonna make a note at the end of this, but I'll, I'll, I'll wait. Centuries ago, the underworld seeded with chaos and maleficent energies. Among the demon hordes, there was one who aspired to reach even greater heights of power and cruelty. This demon, known as Astrakar the Soul Drinker, coveted dominion over both the mortal realm and the netherworld. To achieve this, he sought to forge a weapon that would be a vessel for his own sinister essence and blood magic. Arsakar, Astrakar, with his mastery of the darkest arts, found a mortal blacksmith of unparalleled skill and depravity named Valgrim Skullrender. Valgrim was infamous for crafting weapons from the souls of his victims, and he revealed in their torment. His heart was as black and as the void itself, making him the perfect instrument for Astrakar's ambitions. Under Ostrakar's malevolent guidance, Valgrim delved into forbidden realms of forging. They unearthed the deepest secrets of blood magic and bound the essence of fallen demons into the blade's pommel. The forge where Ebon Bane took the shape was a place of unspeakable suffering, as the souls of countless damned were consumed to infuse the weapon with unparalleled malevolence. The sword's rain guard was fashioned from the skull of a powerful demon, and it seemed to writhe in with an otherworldly energy, as if the demon's agony lingered within it. As the blade took shape, it thirsted for more power and darkness, and it demanded the soul as its final offering. Ostrakar, consumed by his ambition, willingly offered his own soul to the blade. That's, that's a nice twist. 
merging his essence with the malevolence they had crafted. Ritual that followed was cataclysmic, causing tremors in both the mortal world and the underworld, as the Evil Bane absorbed the last vestiges of Asakar's infernal power. With the Evil Bane now complete, it became an embodiment of malevolence, a weapon capable of summoning the very forces of the netherworld. However, its insatiable appetite for souls and darkness would come at a terrible cost, as it would gradually corrupt the essence of any who dared to wield it. Nice, 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 nice. I really like the story, man. And this is a really nice result. This is a really nice executed game weapon. There's a couple of things on the textures that I would probably improve, especially the metal to make it a little bit more metal. It doesn't look as metal or as metallic right now. Could be because of the roughness and things like that. But other than that, it looks really, really, really good. It is a long story, but I'm gonna here's here's what I'm gonna I'm gonna mention, man, because because you got some nice ideas. The twist of the demon, like doing the what's the word? The twist of the demon doing the, the the switch, like offering himself, it's very, very cool. But here's what I wanted to talk about. In the very beginning of the story, you already mentioned two bad people, the demon and the blacksmith, both bad elements, and they, they want to create this weapon. Here's where you always need to ask yourself, and not only with this story, but with everything that we do, how can we create something more interesting? And the word that I personally like to use is contrast. How can I have contrast between this super evil demon lord and this blacksmith, right? And what about the blacksmith is a good blacksmith? Why would a good blacksmith do this to the demon lord? Maybe the good blacksmith has gone through a traumatic experience, he lost his family, and the demon lord is offering a deal. Help me build this weapon, and I will bring your family back so that you can see them again. Maybe the family just, like, died to the plague or something, like, very unfortunate event. Like, it was no one's fault, but he's very, like, hurt, right? And he offers that deal. But then when the deal is about to be over and he's waiting for that to happen, like, the demon, of course, cheats the deal, and, and he does not bring the family back. So now, you have someone who built the weapon, who is extremely angry at the demon, and who, who could eventually help the hero, like, find a way to destroy that specific weapon, right? Because he's the only one that knows it, and he's the only one that has, like, that type of knowledge. So again, instead of having two bad guys, how can we have one good guy and one bad guy, like, combined together to generate another type of story and that's the kind of, st of thing not you, you don't always need to do this like you're not gonna find this sort of like deep stories in like a kid's cartoon or something sometimes you'll have a kid's cartoon and it's gonna be the bad guy and his evil like assistant and they're both gonna be like breaking havoc and stuff like that but if you want to do something again a little bit more mature a little bit more advanced that's when you can start bringing no like, i think they call this a no nonsense like um, just like like shades of gray into the whole thing it's not always good versus bad like how do we bring shades of gray maybe there's going to be an arc on the character's development of this blacksmith where he goes rogue and he goes evil and he uses the weapon because he's freaking angry with the demon and there's going to be like a redemption arc where he goes he becomes good again and even though he will never meet his family um in the living world again he tries to find redemption so that he can meet them in heaven or something that's the again the kind of stuff from a story perspective that could be added to um to elevate certain things into a more interesting more complex story but i know this was just a simple story just like a one page story so i know it's very difficult to bring all of that sort of like like gradients into it but hopefully this like sparks uh, a little bit more in the um in the creative process of how we we have to think about the skull is amazing everything is really good again from a technical perspective the only thing is that the sword does not look like metal it looks a little bit dull in that regards usually usually this parts right here should be a little bit shinier like really 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 shine but this is really good work man really really good work very good we're missing like six or seven i do feel like we have enough time we got two by sefter i think you posted in two different sites okay so this is the render interesting we got like a portal and the sword in the middle of the portal we got the story. Setherin, the first kingdom reached by the underworld. He, star he started in a savage battle against the possessed. He had the defense of day one and two nights. The city was enveloped by a great dark mist, which was said to have taken the entire kingdom to the depths of the underworld. Once the fog dissipated, only that door of the Dunar Cathedral remained, surrounded by a lake in what was once the city full of life. Every crescent moon, an aura emanates from said door. It is said that when you go through it, you will find an internal battle against yourself against what was your deepest fear in the past, but it is only a legend since no one has returned once they passed through the door. The elders tell two stories. The first, that this door is the entrance to the underworld itself. The second is that it hides the ancient strength and will of that city, 
able to face any possess being okay okay so this sword is like uh, i guess if you do pass the test you get access to the sword so the story is good i like it like a, a, a city falls into the underworld it's consumed and all of the information of that city or of the souls of that city they coalesce into this like a uh, moon sword that holds like the hopes and the strengths of all of the people that um inhabited there so i like that However, I feel like the render is not doing us any favor. And the reason is, look at the proportions. Look at the proportions of the render here. There we go. So if we make a very like little square right here of where the weapon is, like this is the volume that our weapon is currently occupying in our image. Compare that to the rest of the image we're not utilizing our full resolution for what we need to do ideally what you would like to do for the like the final render would be something like this where the sword occupies most of the screen this is what you want you always want to be able to see as much as possible of whatever it is you're presenting otherwise it becomes more like a cinematic shot and in this particular competition that was not the deal i was not asking for a cinematic shot i was asking for a a nice shot of the weapon itself it's a cool design i like the sort of like moons i like this oh this is very cool look at what he did here he added the different faces of the moon as little like emblems along it so this is like the full moon this is half moon like one of the quarters, the other one of the quarters. That's very cool. That's very, very nice. And I can already think about other things like an eclipse where, where it's completely dark and then it gets like the full energy. I don't know. Like there's some cool stuff. The moon is always like a very nice thematic uh, element. Um, again, from a, from a design perspective, I think it's good. The story, it's a little bit, um, a little bit, uh, not, not super basic, but a little bit basic. And uh, finally, presentation, we need to really, really improve the presentation. Because otherwise, we're not seeing the weapon. We're seeing something else. The, the whole environment right here. These logos, I know we use this, or at least I use this quite a bit in the in the YouTube thumbnails. That's more for, for thumbnails. I would never use them on my on my projects. Uh, if I'm going to include this information, I'll just include that in the description. Uh, a long time ago, it was important because you wanted to know what kind of softwares people use. But nowadays, you just call them, send them an email and ask, right? Like You, you really don't need this information on the on the image itself. Now let's go with Asariel Reaper's Embrace. Dude, this looks very cool. Shit. This looks like a Demon Souls or again, like Bloodborne Elden Ring sort of thing. Like even the render, it looks like a game render. <laughs> That's very cool. Reaper's Embrace. Let's take a look. In the celestial realm where immortality reigns reign supreme, a weapon of unparalleled darkness emerged. Reaper's Embrace, the immortal bane sickle. Crafted from obsidian, its blade devoured light, adorned with haunting engravings of souls and reapers. Wrapped in crimson leather, the handle demanded unwavering will, for its touch meant banishment of the soul. Chains, ethereal and smoky, bound it to its wielders, and celestial symbols adorned its blade, signifying it its power against immortals. This weapon, a fusion of fire and ice, was a harbinger of doom for heavenly beings, an instrument of salvation or damnation for those who dare grasp its chilling malevolent yeah this is looking good man asriel very very cool so history uh it's not great because it has again little things or elements that are not present here you mentioned ice and fire i don't see the ice and the fire i just see a a demonic sort of like sickle so if you're not gonna include ice and fire don't include it i love the skull and the sort of like organic shape to it that's very very cool now one question is this in perspective or are we seeing a side view because i'm a little bit uh I i'm questioning that a little bit right there it looks very nice but I just want to know if it's, it's... Okay, it's a little bit in perspective, right? Kind of like like falling towards us. I would love to see a side view, like a perfect side view, just to see how this looks. But this looks very, very, very nice. So from a technical perspective and from a, from a design perspective, I really like this one right here. Purple Plasma Sci-Fi Alien Movie Bio Shapey. Yeah, this looks very organic, but I, I don't see it sci-fi. I, I see the skulls, and skulls are usually like fantasy. So, but this is very cool, man. Yeah, congratulations. Again, careful on this thing right here. Uh, I would, uh, for, for presentation purposes, you don't need the image on the background. It's easier to have just like a black background so that we can read it easily. Also, careful on what kind of font you select because there are certain fonts that can be a little bit difficult to, uh, to interpret. 
We have uh, Jufei's Golden Sword. This is, I don't have a name right here, so I'm just gonna write Jufei. When I first crossed paths with Jufei, her swift decision to join the ranks of the Shadow Dance was nothing short of remarkable. While she had little regard for many of the traditional costumes observed by other gladiators, thanks for the follow, Samai! I yearned to impart my unique fighting style to her, but she remained resolute in her decision not to embrace the art of dual Kodashi. Nevertheless, she absorbed a technique or two from me, and I took immense pleasure in witnessing the evolution of her elegant shadows. In battle, she wielded a magnific magnificent golden sword, which left a mesmerizing trail of gleaming light in its way, cutting down all those who dared to stand in her path. Again, careful here. Um, well, first of all, this doesn't look like 3D. I'm not sure if it's 3D and then you paint it over, because she is definitely painted. But this looks more like the story of her, the, the character, than the sword. So we gotta be very careful on those sort of things. This does look like a like a like a weapon or like a drawing. I'm pretty sure it's a drawing, but I'm not sure if it's a drawing on top of a 3D model, which could be. I appreciate the participation, Jufe, or well, I can see your name right here. I appreciate that you you participated. However, since we are evaluating 3D, it's very difficult for me to to give you a specific like valuation on this one. Um, due to it not looking like... The sword is 3D. Okay, okay. Well, if the sword is 3D, then we definitely need to clean it up. And again, following what I mentioned with the last one, it's very distracting to see the character because we're seeing... Um, we're seeing the, the rest of the elements, okay? So so be careful. Be careful there when when following the, the indications. And uh, actually, th this contest, I think it's a, it's a good uh, like exercise in that regard. I've gotten into, well, not me particularly, but I've had a lot of issues with artists that have worked for me when you give them an indication, let's say, hey, I need you to model a barrel and I need the barrel to have 5k triangles. And then they deliver the barrel and it's a 500 triangle barrel with super low rest texture. It's like, oh, I wanted to optimize. Like, no, I told you 5k triangles because 5k triangles is what we're looking for. So it's very, very important that we always try to follow directions. So in this case, if the direction was 3D, no characters, just a weapon, try to follow that so that you can get the, the best possible results, okay? Let's go with Esteban HM. We have a lot of well, several hammers. In a long forgotten ancient forest, arrests a legendary battle hammer. This mighty artifact was crafted from the iron of weapons once wielded by ancient warriors who fought for noble causes. Additionally, the hammer boasts the horn of the mythical creature known as Dracorin, a given a divine gift bestowed by one of the gods in recognition of this warrior's bravery. Despite its incredible heritage and the unique abilities it bestows upon its wielder, the hammer has slumbered for millennia in a deep and profound torpor. Though no one has laid claim to it, the hammer patiently awaits the arrival of the next valiant war. Valiant? Valiant? Is it valiant? I think it's valiant. Valiant warrior who shall rise in defense of a just and noble cause. Yet, the legendary hammer will remain in solitary vigil, condemned to an eternal slumber in a world where just, just causes appear to have faded long ago. Nice! Um, I like the hammer. It's a relatively simple design. I don't see the embedded horn that you mean. I'm not sure if it's the handle. You say here that it uh, boasts the horn of the mythical creature. I don't see the horn. Or I'm not sure if this upper thing, like the metal thing, is supposed to be the horn. We need to be a little bit more clear there. The technical execution is good. Uh, <laughs> what is that? You guys see that? Oh no, wait, wait, that's Discord. I thought it was I thought it was something on the render. My bad. No, okay. So on the render side of things, it's just a little bit more exposure. Just, if we are gonna have this sort of like spotlight effect, just like punch the spotlight so that it has more intensity and we can see a little bit more. Because again, we're having a very similar issue to what we had on, on one of the previous ones. Oh my god, I hit. I don't know why my Photoshop does this sometimes, where I will copy an image. And it won't copy it properly? There we go. So we go image, adjustments, exposure. You can see that we can expose this a little bit more. And now we can actually see the hammer, right? And after you expose this, if you want to add that sort of like dramatic effect to the whole thing, you can do it. Just, just add a, a sort of... A, like lure here. So this is like an overlay and lower the opacity. And that way we, we bring back the focus on the hammer and we can actually see what's going on. So that's why, again, render, my friends, super, super important. Rendering is essential to having good uh, elements. But yeah, that's a good one, Esteban. Good story. I like it. Good design. 
and good um, good execution. Just just be careful with those little points on the render. Rudastra, we got this one right here, Rudastra, and we're almost there, almost there. I'm gonna see if I'm able to announce the winner today, which should be very very soon. Oh, it's a long story, man. Since we're a little bit short in time, I promise I'm gonna read the story. Like I'm just gonna like read it generally but i'm gonna read the story off camera just to 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 really give you a, a good evaluation because otherwise we're not gonna finish actually how many we have left we just have two left okay okay no we can read it i'm just gonna read it real close rudrash kratris okay rudrash refers to the dried stones or seeds of the Eleocorpus Ganitrus, as per Hinduism, after the demolition of Tripuras, Lord Shiva returned to the Himalayas, and there he closed his eyes and meditated for some time, and then opened his eyes. Few droplets of tears fell from the from them on earth. On the earth where the tears fell, later gave rise to Drudrakshtra trees. Okay, so it's a tree. That's cool. Oh, uh, Okay, okay, okay. It's the last tear of Lord Shiva. When he cried for the extinction of humans, it had a distinct glow and source or energy coming out of it. After researching for a while, they decided that it's a divine technology beyond their understanding, and it has infinite energy to generate power to kill anything that comes under their way. Or using the Rudraksh, they casted a weapon, Rudrastra, with the strongest metal ever existed to reclaim the throne and save their people from evil. That's very cool. Son says, maybe announce winners in a separate video tomorrow. Also, all impressions will settle down better. Yeah, I, I think that's that's ideal. I, I think I'm gonna do that um we'll, we'll of course be uploading the live stream on youtube tomorrow but let me let me get just a little bit of time to really go through them go through the points and i'm gonna announce the winners tomorrow at 8 a.m mexico time which is in about like what 18 hours or something so so we will announce the winner on youtube um because i i think that's uh you, you guys deserve me to to really take time and 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 check what's um what you presented so let's go with this one and what we're going to do now, because we're still going to have a couple of minutes before I have to leave, is we are going to pick a people's choice like uh, selection, okay? So you guys here in the chat are going to um, help me select one that's going to be like the people's choice. And maybe, maybe we'll give it a price as well. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see if the budget allows. So this looks very cool, man. Um, I, I'm going to grab this one as the final submission so that we can see the whole thing. It's definitely a little bit chunky on the top part, but I do like the core that we have right here on the on the head of the spear. Now, it does look a little bit like Poseidon's trident, so it looks a little bit more like Atlantis. I'm not too familiar with um, with uh, like Shiva and um, this religion, so I'm not sure what kind of elements you're incorporating there that are represented in this weapon right here. But the render presentation, I would say this is what I, I, I like to see from a weapon. It's a very clean weapon representation, it's a very nice, like clean metal reflections and everything, and uh, and we can see the whole product, like the whole product. The story, it's a cool story. I like the story, so I feel like this is a, a great, great piece, man. Congratulations there. And finally, finally, we have method. Last but not least, we're gonna go over methods of weapon. There's also another weapon that was not submitted in time that I want to give the person a little bit of feedback. So, so let's do that. Okay, story. Jonathan Hargreaves, um, I believe that's a name that's already been used somewhere, so be careful with using names that are very like common or familiar. Was in his younger days a proficient electrical engineer who worked on the small coastal village of Ocean Springs, Mississippi. Later in life, he retired and decided to dedicate all of his remaining life to his passion, fishing. He then became a lonely fisherman after his wife passed away and spent most of his time far out into the bay catching big fish. Once the zombie apocalypse hit, he knew he had to act fast. Using his fading knowledge of electricity along with his vast fishing supplies, he devised a legendary fishing rod capable of electrocuting the zombies that he precisely wanted to take down in order to take specific supplies. The weapon also was fitted with a car battery for portable usage, a multimeter to check the battery charge, and a voltage regulator to control how much of a shock he was dispensing to the zombie in case they got too close. He also put a machete on the front of the, of the front to slash them. The entire set was carried by a big fishing rod hip support with regular straps. And this is it. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to be perfectly honest with you, man. The first time I saw this weapon, I thought you were doing something very crazy and very like sick. 
and, and sink in like the bad way, not in the good way. But now that you explained it's a fishing rod, it makes a little bit more sense. However, the way that this thing is positioned, and maybe it's just my dirty mind, but it just looks very weird, man. <laughs> it just looks really, really freaking weird. So I like the idea. It's a good idea to have like a fishing rod and be electrocuting zombies from ahead or from afar. I would just present it on a different way, probably, because the position, yeah, the position of the whole thing is just really, really um, questionable. <laughs> a little bit unpractical, yeah. So, um, but let's not dabble on that and let's look at the at the story. Story is good. I always like story, like zombie stories. That's very, very cool. The, the execution is really nice. You executed the tension right here, which is difficult to do. Like making sure things look tense and like there's weight to them is actually quite uh, tricky. So this tension that you have right here is really, really tricky. And the materials are also really, really good. The design though, I do think the design is a little bit busy. It's a little bit busy through like several places. It, there's a lot of stuff going on, right? And couple that with what I mentioned earlier, there's a lot of stuff going on in a very weird like presented way. So that could potentially generate some uh, questionable opinions from other people. But other than that, this is a cool element. And I like the process that, that you went for all of this. Now, I'm, I'm sure this fishing sort of like contraption that he's wearing is very normal for someone that, that does fishing a lot. Like someone who knows about that definitely knows that that's normal. But for someone, at least like me, that is very childish and has never gone fishing, I, I find this very funny. <laughs> so yeah. And yeah, the render does have a little bit of noise unfortunately so so we're gonna need to take a little bit of um, attention to that because all of this noise right here there's there's um there's no reason to, to have it nowadays it's very very easy to remove noise especially with um with things such as blender or maya they all have automatic denoisers even even marmoset if you're doing the render in marmoset should be should be fairly easy to denoise but yeah, this is super clever idea man like super super original design you got the full points there on the sign because it's, just, it's a really crazy design. Cool. So that's all the submissions. With that, it is normal, but you wouldn't use that if you were casting it for like sitting down. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm not sure how, how normal it is. We, we don't have big lakes here in Mexico, or at least not where I am. So, so there's no way to, to go fishing. <laughs> um like like i can imagine this whole thing as a backpack i i think that would be very cool and then you are carrying the the fishing pole and just like fishing with zombies that 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 seems a little bit more plausible because yeah having the battery down there I, I don't think that's very safe so this is all of the official submissions however yesterday we closed the submission we even gave five extra minutes because i i, I fucked up a little bit there on the closing times but there was five extra minutes for people to submit and there were a couple more uh, submissions that didn't make it through and i want to show you one of them that was really really good so this one was eternal radiance by i don't have the name here I'm not sure if you're there on the chat, man, if you can uh, just let us know your name. But he created this very, very cool looking sword. And I would say this has a really high execution. Like this is a very clean and very nice execution. There's a couple of things such as the, the edge going in this direction. I would change the direction to go in the, the direction of the sharpness. Uh, but this glow and these runes that he managed to capture here on the sun is very, very cool. Very nice presentation with the borders and everything. So, yeah, this is another weapon that unfortunately didn't manage to submit on time. But it's uh, it's nonetheless a, a honorable mention. Jeremy, Jeremy, there you go. So, Jeremy, congratulations on this object. This is a great portfolio piece, by the way. So, you should feel absolutely proud about this one, even though you, were, you didn't manage to submit it for this contest. So, yeah. That's it, my friends. Um, just a couple of note notices or, or uh, announcements before we 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 leave for for today. First. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, everyone for participating in this contest. This is the first contest that we do here in the channel. It was amazing. We had what, like over thirty submissions or something like that. It was like. 40, almost 40 submissions. So it was amazing. Thanks to everyone that participated. I'm going to be going over my, my little notes. See here, I know that all of the scores I'm going to be showing or I'm going to be doing my, my averages. Oh, wait, I didn't show you. There you go. 
So here's my little table with all of the scores annotated for, again, story, design, and technical. I'm going to be going over all of the results and seeing who the top are. Remember that we're going to have one like major winner, the main winner of the event, and we're going to have two runner-ups. I'm going to be announcing those on the beginning of the video for tomorrow. So tomorrow we're going to have this exact same video, and at the beginning of the video we're going to be announcing, and then I'm just going to let the whole live stream run so that you guys can see it if, in case you missed any of the feedback. We are going to have more contests coming soon it's not gonna be during this month uh, october we're not gonna have the contest and november i'm not sure but i for sure am thinking about one for december so let's see if we can get one on november and if not we're definitely gonna have one in december you guys are gonna be um welcome to participate of course it's completely free and i'm gonna be of course announcing the winners and contacting them to give them their prizes as soon as we get this all three winners the runner-ups and the main winner also get a one hour session in case you want to have it with me where we can talk about your portfolio your career any tips or tricks that you might want to learn i'm going to be available for you as well and uh, the runner-ups are going to get a free course of their choice a golden ticket you can use it for our current courses or you can use it for a future course as well again the winners were are going to be announced tomorrow at our in our youtube channel at our usual time which is 8, 8 a.m uh, mexico time and um yeah that's pretty much it guys thank you very much sculptober is still going on in case you are not aware we have this little event there's no competition but every day we have a different topic and you can just do a quick sculpt or model about the topic presented on that day just to have fun see what others are doing and just kickstart your creativity for that day so feel free to join if you want to do it uh it's here on the on the discord channel that we're gonna link on the um, on the chat in just a second and uh yeah that's pretty much it my friends Again, thank you very much. Have an excellent weekend. And I'm going to be seeing you back very, very soon. Bye-bye.